I'm Pastor Tyler of the Progressive Church of God in Christ, hoping that you will enjoy our service of this evening. My name is Robin Chapman Bowles. I'm a nurse practitioner and healthcare provider in Sacramento County. And my population of primary care that I usually deal with are, are children zero to 18. And we are here to talk a little bit about our community concerns about the coronavirus or COVID-19. And just to let you know, we are not uh, experts in infectious disease. We are just here as community support and healthcare provider sharing. And my name is Crystal Cyprian. I am also a registered nurse. And as Sister Chapman has said, we just want to have a chat about what's um, going on with this coronavirus and COVID-19. So before we get started, we'll just uh, start with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity just to share, to share this knowledge that we have. And we're asking that you would just give peace to your people in the midst of this. Father, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. And we are asking for you to just give us the strength to be fearless in the midst of this situation. We thank you for that. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Coronavirus. <laughs> this is a new word that's been introduced into our um, vocabulary. So what is this coronavirus disease? You know, it, it's not new. It's mm -hmm. actually been around since about 1960. So there are seven types of strands of this coronavirus disease. Some that you may be familiar with that we've experienced in the past was SARS. SARS was a version. Um, there was MERS, which was in the Middle East. And now we're becoming um, acquainted with COVID-19 and we're learning stuff every day about this particular strand of the coronavirus disease. And so we were really concerned uh, one of the issues about the coronavirus or COVID-19 is the way it's transmitted and it's transmitted from person to person and so we don't get it you know by non-direct co contact, we get it by directly from people we come in contact with. So it's very important that we wash our hands and we cover our mouths when we cough or sneeze and we're not being around people who are sick. So it usually takes two to 14 days for our symptoms to show up. It's usually a cough, a runny nose, a fever, and a, being short of breath. And people who are most susceptible to those um, things are older people with a lot of other um medical problems like asthma, heart problems, diabetes, and people who have other respiratory issues. And they're more susceptible to children and people who are immunocompromised or your immune system is compromised. So I think out of that, symptoms, everyone wants to know, what are those symptoms? You want to think about a fever? Do I have a fever? Do I have a cough? Or am I short of breath? Because those are the three main symptoms. But that's associated to COVID-19. It's also associated to allergies. It's associated to a cold, the common flu, all of these things. So what do you do if you start to feel them? Do not run out to your doctor, right? right. <laughs> so don't do that. It's two to 14 days for that incubation. Stop days. for a moment, right? Monitor yourself. Just if you would get a fever before, treat yourself. What do you do when you have a fever, right? Yeah. Tylenol, ibuprofen, you're pulling it out, right? And most of all, drink, drink, drink. Yeah. Hydrate yourself. Give yourself lots of fluids. And most of all, just do the most important thing. Wash, wash your, your hands. hands. Wash your hands. So that leads us to prevention. Prevention is a big part of how we transmit the diseases. And so one of the things, you know, we're... At home right now, everybody is, is, you have a stay at home. You cannot be around other people. A lot of things have been um, closed down, your churches, your movie theaters, your shopping, all of that's a big change. So the biggest thing we can do is stay home. 
take this very, very seriously. This is not something to, to deny or to take lightly. We ask that you really consider protecting yourself and your children by washing your hands, staying away from sick people, report, be aware of signs and symptoms and reporting those, and don't rush to come in to say, you know, I want to be tested in Sacramento County. We are limited testing right now. And so based on where you've been and who you've been around, they probably won't be testing you. If your child or person at home is seriously ill, yes, we do want you to go to the emergency room for life-threatening things. But things like common colds and coughs and things like that, treat them at home as best you can. Be in contact with your health care provider when you need to. But most of all, good hand washing, covering your mouth, and stay away from crowds. Because this virus does not spread itself. We, we the people, we spread right. the virus. That is the reason why they've put community mitigation actions in place. That's why there's the stay in shelter, um, why we're staying at home, sh shelter in place. Stay at home. But staying at home, kitties are at home, everyone's at home, we're all at home. Some of us are working remote. What do we do now that we're home? It felt weird yesterday day getting up on Sunday morning and having church in my living room. <laughs> But it's what we had to do, right? We had virtual do. church. It was all over the place. So yep. many people were streaming live. So I, I want to talk about a few things about why you're at a, while you're home. What can you do? So first, I'll speak to those that are new to working remote. When you're working at home, get up every morning and get dressed. Do not stay in your pajamas all day. Get up, get dressed, go to a designated space so that you can work. You're gonna work in your office or if it's going to be in the living room or if it's going to be in your bedroom, this is your working space. And schedule yourself throughout that day. Take a morning break, morning coffee break at nine o'clock, get up, go in the kitchen, have your coffee and, and have your coffee and maybe sit outside or sit on the porch and drink your cup of coffee, then go back to your workspace. And as always, you always have to have a lunch break. Don't work through your lunch at the computer. Get up, take your 30 minute lunch, walk around, just have some fresh air, then go back to it. It's very difficult for some people when they're working at home, they're not used to it. And you can blend the professional and the personal at the same time. You're washing clothes. You're trying to do something for the kids. You're cooking dinner. You're answering an email. That is how you become overwhelmed. Set your schedule and prioritize your time. Absolutely. And it's always a challenge for those who have to work from home. Uh, what do you do with the kids? <laughs> so children are a challenge, but this is your time to be very creative with your work day, with your schedule, with your play time, and you have to take time with the kids. And so this is unprecedented in our time. We haven't had this connection with our kids 24 seven all the time. So get creative, get out frequent walks, to the, uh, just in your neighborhood, I would avoid uh, parks and structures that have a lot of uh, transmission of uh, viruses and coughs and colds. But this is a good opportunity for family to get active. Everybody do a walk. Every, you know, we can increase it by a, you know, from half a mile to a mile. Um, find things at home to do. Game, game hour, game day, cooking classes for the kids. And most of all, explain to them why you're at home. It's really hard on the children um, and their mental health to find out they're not with their friends. They're not at school. They have to be home. We have to wash our hands. We have to be, everything is different now. So it's a good time and opportunity to explain to them. This is very important that we cover up. Kids can get very sick. Mommy and daddy can get sick and you can get other kids sick. So as much as they can understand, and they're kids, they're not going to understand all. They're not going to do everything well. They're going to play and run and touch each other, but we're going to minimize it as much as we can and with explanation and constant information to the kids on their level be very beneficial. And one word you said was mental health, yeah. right? While we're going through this, the anxiety, the stress, the unknown, um, we need to really be able to work on our own mental health. And what does that mean? You know, keep yourself mentally healthy. Do not have CNN on 24 seven playing in the background, just hearing all of this information, turn it off for a little bit. Set yourself a schedule that, okay, I'm gonna listen to it at the morning news, and then I'm gonna turn around and maybe I'll hear what's happening at 12 o'clock news, maybe there's some changes, and then maybe at dinner at the six o'clock news, or wait till the 10 o'clock news. But just 
shut yourself off from that. Not having that constant information about what's happening day, minute to minute change. Just pull back from that. That will help you mentally. And as well as social media. While social media is a way for us to stay connected, it's not our only connection, right? Absolutely. You have FaceTime. You have your phone. You can pick up and talk to somebody, call somebody, pray with somebody. Just those that are at home and they're by themselves, reach out to them. Stay connected that way, right? Right? You can be on social media and you can have 500 friends and not one person call you. So mentally, we don't want people to feel isolated and like they're alone. This is your opportunity to go on that one-on-one -on -one ministry. Absolutely. And we also want to consider our people who are at home and are alone, those elderly population, those people who are infirmed or can't get around. And their only information and in the interaction they get with people is through their daily activity, which has now been cut off. They are now home. So it's a good idea to check on those folks. Check on those folks. See what you can do for them. Go shopping for them. Call them. Keep them in the loop. FaceTime them if you can. Just include them because this is a strain on our mental health also. We have a lot of people who are isolated and they have further isolation because now they can't get out at all. And they're can't shop. They can't uh, interact. So it's an absolute good idea to and to be helpful to one another, just to keep in contact and keep in touch with them. And last but not least on speaking to mental health, also just for yourself, is there some task at home that you've been planning on doing that you haven't had the time to do? Clean out that drunk drawer, go through <laughs> your clothes that you've like, oh, I haven't worn those in a year two years, <laughs> whatever it is, you haven't worn that. Take it and, um, you know, uh, get rid of those things, put them in a bag and you'll be able to bring those to Goodwill a little bit later. But do those type of activities that will just help you stay focused. And then we would be remiss to say, if, the, if you haven't picked up a Bible study, order something, just get into your word. Yes. This is an opportunity for you to draw closer to God, for Reconnect. you to just have time with him. All of these things will will help you sustain mentally, spiritually, and then we got to talk about physically. Oh my gosh, please don't be overeating. I was like, okay, every time you walk through the kitchen, you don't need a handful of nuts. So <laughs> this is a very stressful time. And it stress is. eating is a big deal. And so if we can just limit our meals to uh, our breakfast and we're done and no, not another snack or anything until lunchtime. So it's a good idea not to overindulge, even though we many of us have hoarded a lot of food over this last few weeks. <laughs> it's a good idea just to schedule your meals, close the kitchen between meals, get out, get be active in your community by walking, but still keeping your six feet Distance. distance from other people. Yep. So I know we can do this. We will get through this. The Lord will give us strength to you guys will be fearless, but not careless, right? You will do the best that you can to follow all of the CDC guidelines and get the correct information, right? Don't get it off of Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what to do, you can look at the cdc.gov. They have all of the latest um, information on COVID-19 and also usually um, a lot of different organizations like your healthcare, whether it's Kaiser or Sutter or Dignity Health, they all have a lot of information there. And I'll just put this plug in about Dignity Health. They also have a virtual uh, clinic that whether you belong to them or not, you can call in and talk to a healthcare professional and they can give you information and advice um, about this COVID-19. And that's available to everyone. All you have to do is go to dignityhealth.org. And also those people who are Kaiser members, you just remember you will have a lot of video visits and you will also have a lot of telephone visits. That's okay. You will probably be asked to pick up your medication or, or have it mailed to you. If it's something you need urgently, yes, you can kind of come by and, and pick it up. Please take advantage of those opportunities to speak to your physicians. And you also have email. You can email your provider. They have uh, physicians and uh, medical providers online now to help you to get through this you know, crisis. And most of all, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't think of the worst case scenario all the time. Yes, we are worried and you have to be smart, but you have to be careful and please take this serious.
I would leave you all with just two words. Be fearless in these times. Face what we have to face with this COVID-19, but do not be careless. Take into all of the recommendations, all of the information that is given to you. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Take care of one another and just stay in touch. Yeah. Stay connected because we're going to get through this. And if we're going to get through this, we're definitely going to get through this together. Absolutely. We're going to get through this together. Well, thank you for listening to us today. We are here to help. We're here to service our community as healthcare providers. We want to encourage you to walk with God first and help in our community. Yeah. All right. You all have a great time. Thank you for chatting with us. Stay safe out there. Everybody, we want to welcome you to YPWW Live. I have with me two magnificent, wonderful uh, colleagues here. Uh, my co host, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Sister LaPria Ginevra. Amen. And I'm Sister Makia James. Praise God. And we um, are coming to you. We're going to be talking about parenting through a pandemic. And we thought that it would be ideal to, um, we have heard so many great messages and so many great Bible studies, but we thought it would be great uh, to just take some time to talk to parents and to uh, minister and to share and to converse with you about um, tools and tips and things that might be valuable to you um, in this season as you are parenting. But first, we want to start with a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity to share and to minister. We thank you, Father, that you have given us um, the, the ability, the wherewithal um, to be parents, to be youth workers. Father, we pray, God, that you would help us to navigate this conversation, that you would give us strength in this season, Father, and that we would be able to be a blessing to our youth. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We thank you for the technology that you have given us. We thank you for our media ministry and we thank you for those that will join us today in jesus name jesus. Amen. amen amen praise god amen. okay let's see uh sister <coughs> makia tell us um uh, have any of our folks turned tuned in yet yeah it looks like we have sister denisha colbert the colbert family hey guys hey, welcome Colbert family. welcome thanks for joining it's good to see you all so we're going to um, we're going to talk about parenting through a pandemic, and I actually um, just wanted to start off by um, noting that this particular time and season that we're in is super duper duper important um, for parents to be instilling um, an environment for faith and growth, um, and we just want to encourage you. Um, there are a lot of things weekly Bible studies children. Church, Kids Kingdom. There are a lot of wonderful ministries here at Progressive Church of God in Christ that our children are not able to participate in because they're not able to be here physically. But we want to just encourage you to take the um, time to create an environment of faith uh, for your children. Take the time to have intentional prayer um, with your family um, so that they know that, that the church is not necessarily the four walls where yes. we worship, but we are the church, right? Yes, that's right. Um, and, and we're actually in a time, saints of God, where it's important for us to realize that if ever we were going to demonstrate faith and the power of God um, in the in, in, for our children, now is the time. Now is the time for us to be an example to them. Now is the time for us um, to demonstrate what it means to be faithful and diligent in prayer and fasting and studying our word. And so don't just uh, find yourself in a cycle where you're studying and you're fasting and you're praying. 
love your children. Give them the opportunity uh, to, uh, to participate and to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ in this season. So I want to start off with just a couple of tips um, that the youth department here at the Progressive Church of God in Christ wants to let you know or wants to encourage you to do um, in this season. The first thing is just to stay prayerful. Um, it is important to stay prayerful. It is important to pray over your children. It is important to involve them uh, in prayer. It's really important um, for your children to be learning what to pray for. Mm -hmm. um, and at this period in time, we need to be involving our children in praying for our country, our yes. world, um, th themselves, their yes. parents. Um, we need to be praying collectively that mm -hmm. God's power power um, will manifest on the earth. Yes. We need to be praying for those that are sick and those that are shut in. Yes. And I had mentioned this before, but if uh, we as families can get together and play Connect Four and have movie night and Taco Tuesday, then we can get together and spend equal amounts of time praying and talking to God. Right. So what we want to encourage you to do is make a family prayer list. Mm -hmm. Make a family prayer list. One list where everybody contributes to that family prayer list and every day for this week you get together you pray over that list you ask everybody to pick one thing that they're praying and then be specific because if you are specific with your prayer request as God manifests himself as he does what you ask him to do you're building the faith of your children amen amen, amen. amen. okay so the first thing is to make that prayer list make that family prayer list and set a time for family prayer set a time to come. Now, I'm not talking about five minutes, right? Like, yes. if, 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 if they have to, I don't know about you, actually, I know this group. When we were growing up, when it was time for prayer, we had to get on our knees. Yes. Right? Yes. And even if we fell asleep, we were going to fall asleep we're on our knees. Right. <laughs> right? Like, we were going to, there was going to be right. some prayer. That's right. There was going to be a posture of prayer that was important. Does that, yes. does that resonate yes. with y'all? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we want to encourage you, hey, they might fall asleep during prayer, but so what? That's yeah. right. That's a good posture to fall asleep. Right. That's a good way to fall asleep, I, I right? Fall asleep with Jesus. Right. Right. Fall asleep, right. You'll be all right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> And, and, yes. and we want to encourage you yes. also to allow your children to develop their own prayer words. Yes. Right? Because sometimes, like, I, I remember one time, actually, um, Makai, was it Makai or Nia, one of them, we had asked them to pray at a youth department event, and the words that were coming out of their mouth, like, just demonstrated that they had been hearing other people pray, but it also was from their heart. Right? right? Like, I, Joseph is a say, good example. Joseph prayed one time, and I was like, you better pray. Right. <laughs> 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 yes. So, yes. so definitely, um, you know, yeah. making making sure that a part of your home culture is praying. Culture, home culture. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Do you guys want to say anything about prayer in the home? Um, I, I feel like it's like you said, it's essential. Um, and I think the biggest point that you that you just made was um, as they see the prayer that sticks um, sticking with me as they see the prayers that you're praying being answered. It builds their faith. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And that and that's what you want to demonstrate to them that God, our God hears our God. God answers prayers mm -hmm. that's right. and that's going to build their faith. And believe it or not, that's going to stick with them. Mm -hmm. They'll mm -hmm. always remember mom and dad and us as a family we prayed mm -hmm. and God heard us and answered our prayer mm -hmm. so God is real mm -hmm. That's right. amen amen. Yeah. amen nothing is more powerful especially in the, in the in the family context and continuity and repetition like if you're gonna pray at five o'clock then pray at five o'clock yeah, don't don't oh well you know tomorrow we'll you know we'll we'll pick back up where we started no be consistent. Yeah. If the family prayer time is at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. the family prayer time is at 5 o'clock. And if you can instill that in your children, they might not remember like specifically what was prayed for, but they will remember that you took the time to honor God in prayer. Amen. That's right. Amen? Amen. Okay, so um, the second thing is to demonstrate the importance of putting our trust in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And how can we do that? One of the ways that I think that we can demonstrate the importance of putting our trust in Jesus Christ is maybe somewhere in your house having like a testimony wall, mm -hmm. taking some cue cards and just putting mm -hmm. everybody every day, mm -hmm. say something that God did for you yes, today. I Write like it on that. that card, clip it to the refrigerator, yes. clip it to a bulletin board that you haven't That's used and you haven't thought about. Right? right? Yes. Clip it to there. And then when people get in a, in a space where they're ungrateful, hey, go to the gratitude yes. wall. <laughs> right? 
right. <laughs> right. And, and yes. figure out something that you can become grateful for and add something yeah, to yeah. there. If yes. we don't uh, I- I- increase the, the spirit of gratitude yes. in our homes, then we are pretty much saying that the devil's going to win. True. That's true. Right? And we can't let the devil win. No. So we have to increase um, our children's faith in God. And then it's really powerful when your child tells you what God has done hey. and then you remind hey. them. Yes. Remember yesterday you said that God helped you with your grades? Mm-hmm. Well, God can help you with your grades today. Amen. <laughs> That's right. right. Remember yesterday you said that God yes. helped you with your attitude? Yes. Well, he's the same God yesterday, today, <laughs> and forever. And forever. <laughs> forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> right. Okay? right. Yes. You want to say something about that? Um, no, I disagree. I agree yeah. with everything that you said. And uh, I love that idea of writing down uh, like a testimony wall, writing down yes. what we're grateful for. Um, actually, it reminds me of a conversation I had with Joseph just this mm. week. Mm. And uh, he was letting me know that sometimes I uh, talk about Jesus so much. Like, Mom, why do you always have to talk about Jesus? Why does it always have to be about Jesus? Yeah. And what I shared with him was that um, Jesus is always the answer. That's right. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. And, uh, you know, it took me a while in order to really um, understand and, and truly believe that and accept that and, and adopt that. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was something that was um, said and repeated a lot as a child, but it wasn't something that I really owned mm-hmm. until I was older uh, in life. And I told him that I want to instill this in you now yes. as a child. So as much as I can reiterate that Jesus can do this, Jesus will do, do this, mm-hmm. Jesus has already mm-hmm. Amen. done this, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. And that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to be unapologetic about it as well. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, my grandma used to always say, I ain't going to apologize to no kids. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. yeah I appreciate right. that. Amen. Okay. So the final Amen. thing is, uh, when we, as we are talking about establishing culture in the household, we really need to review some of the practices that we have in our home that are not conducive to building a faith community. Because your house is a faith community, right? And so what I want to encourage you all to do is to come up with some home rules, some some basic rules that everybody contributes to with regard to how you speak to each other, how you interact, how you're going to, you know, be. because the more time you spend with people, the more you realize, like, oh, y'all don't like you. Bless you know, Lord. I mean, you know what I mean. This is this is this uh, is true. This, you spend time with people, and you're like, you know, like I'm real. right? Even the opposite. Like you spend time with somebody, and you're like, oh my god, this child is just like me. Like I did not realize that I have birthed this child that is like the 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 carbon copy of me. Absolutely. Right. And so I think that like as we spend time with each other, sometimes it can be very difficult um, to um, you you know. Know, like just just navigate life like you I, I, I the first week when we were in the pandemic and people were teleworking everybody was like oh my gosh these kids right, <laughs> right? and like yeah. and people were I, I had read this um I read this um um uh meme on uh oh do I need to wipe my face no, no, no. Okay, God, this is, we're fluid, you know what I mean? Right. This is, is PYD live. Right, you know what right, I mean? yeah. right. Yeah, I'm, sweating. Okay. Yeah. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Right. Right. On PYD live, right. we do that here. All right. Yes. Um, yes. So, um, I, had, I seen this meme on Facebook posted by a parent, and it said, Yes, my kids are outside, don't worry about it, it's a fire drill. Right, I love it. I saw that too. I saw that too. I love it. I laughed about that because I was thinking that like we also a part of that rule, a part of that culture that we create in our family is that everybody needs space, right? Right. And if you don't establish that as a rule, then like sometimes we 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 create uncomfortable situations. Like I'm a I'm an introvert, and when I was growing up, I didn't like the whole like everybody just gather and be around each other all the time. Like we would watch wrestling, and we would have that little core time. We talk about Jesus or whatever, and then everybody got to go off in their own pockets. And I think that that should be. something that's established. There's some time where you can spend alone to do the things that you need to do, but you ought to encourage individuality, yes. right? Like yes. You ought to encourage, just like you're encouraging team building and teamwork and family and culture mm-hmm. and prayer, we ought to encourage individuality and give our, our the children an opportunity to establish their own identities Indeed. within their family, right? right? And what Amen. they bring um, to, to, to the family space. So, look
look at the the, the, the practices that your family has mm -hmm. that aren't conducive necessarily to community and faith and growth mm -hmm. and say, you know what, these are some things that we need to review that are going to be different for the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. right? And then, so what you have is you have your gratitude wall, mm -hmm. you have your, your, you have your home rules, mm -hmm. you have whatever I said first that I don't remember. Right, right, right. Prayer. 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 That's right. You got prayer. Yes, yes. You have your prayer request. Yeah. You have that. You have yes. that. You have all these three things. These are things to pray over. Amen. Right? There's never yes. there's never gonna be nothing to pray over, right? Absolutely. Because you have all these rules and regulations and prayer requests and, and wishes. I think the other piece too is that what do people want to get out of like what do people want to learn, right? Like yeah. you have all this time that seems like and you know what I would hate mm -hmm. is it's May and I look back at this time when I worked Correct. at home Correct. or I had extra time with the children and just nothing. Correct. Like I didn't right. learn nothing new. Right. I didn't spend no extra time with the kids. Right. I was just living right. day by day in the moment. Surviving. Yeah. You're just right. trying to survive this time. Um, that's so interesting because um, before we have uh, our mom to mom um, meetings that we, we used to have and I was talking to I, I believe Sister Karen and I used to say Hey Sister Karen felt, Hey Sister Karen if you're hey, there um, but we were talking about how sometimes you feel like you feel like um, as parents you don't have the time to spend with your kids mm -hmm. because school takes up so much time with them mm -hmm. and so the influence the primary influence that they get is from school right, right? Mm -hmm. from friends teachers of course um, but they're so heavily influenced by school because they they spend so much time there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I remember that that used to bother me because I, I used to feel like you know by the time I get home I only have two hours to spend with them mm -hmm. and most of that is spent doing Doing homework, you know, helping them get ready for bed, you know, and then it's to bed and we're done. Right. Yeah. And then we start all over and of course you have your weekends but you're so busy trying to get things done get, to get ready for the next week mm -hmm. that you don't spend a lot of quality time until it just hit me like wait, I've been praying about that. Like, mm -hmm, Lord, mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. feel like I have the the ability to, to have that influence on them, mm -hmm. and now I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now it's like, I have all the time in the world because they are spending 24-7 um, with me, mm -hmm. right? And so, like you were saying, you don't want to wait, you don't want this time to be over, and then you look back and reflect and you say, they they had this time with me, and I didn't do anything with right, it. Right. I didn't mm -hmm. try to instill, instill godly values and spend more time with them and so that's one thing that I'm, I'm grateful for because it is actually a prayer answered mm -hmm. but I didn't realize it mm -hmm. until yes. now right? Right, right so now I'm like Lord just help me to re to to actually take advantage of this time mm -hmm. that uh, we have with our kids mm -hmm. and just know that they are watching you right yes. they're watching how you spend your time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're on your phone all the time, they mm -hmm. see that. That's, That's right. true. Right? You're they, no it, you ain't right. right. You, you're you're not working. So you know that, right? <laughs> so they see that. They see how you interact with your spouse. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They see all of those things now because you're in their face 24-7 mm -hmm. now. So this is the time where I feel like we have to step up and the, re the responsibility is great. Yeah. So we have to step up and actually take advantage of this time That's that right. God has given. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think that that that's really important. And I see, I just want to shout out some folks yes. on our YouTube community. Yes. I'll our YouTube community and you do our Facebook group. Okay. I see, hey, Dr. Kathy James, I appreciate her. I see Hi, she Dr. was like, James. I want all my grandkids in one place. She did. <laughs> shout out to Dr. Kathy James. She's um, on duty. She, um, sister, I see Sister Myrtle Shepherd is on Hi, with mother. us. Hi. Hey, mother. I can't see all the other folks. Oh, I see Sister Dr. Daniel Seta is Hi, on Dr. with us. Hi. Hey, Dr. Yeah. Daniel Seta, yes. um, who's on with us over in Facebook World? So we had the, we mentioned the culverts. Our pastor's here. Hey, Welcome, pastor. pastor. Welcome, um, Sister Regina Smith. Hi, hey, Regina. Sister, Smith. sister Lori Johnson is there. Hey, Sister Lori. Hey, Sister Lori. Um, and then we have... Um, Elder Sylvester. Hey, Elder Sylvester. Hey. Our good friend Michael Griffith. Hey, he Michael. works with Greg. Hey, so Greg. Michael. Michael. Michael's on. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And then we have Sister Christina Gray with us. Hey, How Christina. are you? How are you? Thank you for joining us. Okay. Yes. God bless y'all. Okay, yes. so let's. So okay, that's the first thing we want to do. Just get some ground rules. Just encourage yes. you some some really practical things yes. that you can do in your family. Now, Sister Lapria is going to talk about some tips. Now we're. Not 
not experts no, in any way. Wow. What we no. did was <laughs> we found out that the CDC had a whole page for how to interact right. and, how to, and how to talk to kids about right. COVID. And so we just wanted to share some of those tips with you yes. straight from the CDC. Right. Not right. us. Well, not us. We, don't, right. we, just, we, we try right. to figure out all this on our own as yes. well. So, yes. Sister Lapria, yes. share with us some tips from the CDC around youth. Okay. okay. Yes. Great. Uh, so yes, as Elder Belmonte said, uh, we're, I'm not an expert, so uh, but I do have a, f a few points to share. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is remain calm and reassuring. Yeah. Um, kids look up to parents. They look to us for guidance. Mm -hmm. um, they also look to us to gauge. They look at our reactions to gauge how they should react. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Amen. if we're looking concerned and frazzled mm -hmm. and uh, scared, you know, mm -hmm. and terrified, then they're going to start to have the same yeah. reaction. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, a good example of it I thought of was uh, as, as a parent, I remember with the boys and probably other people have similar memories, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they're a toddler and they're just learning to walk yeah. and they trip every once in a while and you tell them like oh it's okay it's okay right, you're okay you're <laughs> exactly. right because you know that if yeah. you go and you run to them and they're like oh my god then they gonna have the water work right. they're gonna <laughs> yes. be right. out on the floor right. so um so again you react a certain way in order to uh help them react. not yeah react yes. a certain way yes. as well not yes. overreact Correct. um so again we just want to remain calm and reassuring at this time yes okay yes. uh Anything anybody else wanted to say on no, that? We agree. Okay. Uh, the next. It's, it's okay. I just want to add one thing. Yeah. Sometimes calm is like the presentation of calm, even if you're not. Because if you're trying to like stop your kids from moving into a space of anxiety, right. um, this is a this is a Lapria story, but I thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> where, where she, <laughs> I don't even know what the story is. But Joseph, <laughs> Joseph um, asked if one of his friends could come over and play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and Lebrie was like, no, like, right. like social distancing or whatever. Right. And the little boy coughs, and and, and Joseph's response was, Mom, he doesn't have coronavirus. <laughs> like, I know what yeah. you're thinking. Like, <laughs> he was he was on speakerphone, and it was like literally oh, no. like two minutes after he asked me, no. could you go to this boy's house? The boy's house. <laughs> I was like, see, see, I gave him the eye and everything. <laughs> Mama knows that. Right, that's right. Right, so I'm concerned, but I'm not like over anxious. Like, right. I'm just, right. you know, right. you ain't going over to nobody's house. Right, exactly, exactly. Oh. Right. Oh, yes, yes. right. Thank you, Eldon. Uh, so the next one was make yourself available to listen and to talk. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, right now we're dealing with things that uh, we probably have never dealt with before mm -hmm. yes. um, with, uh, yeah, just certain, just the atmosphere, the environment that we're around, the, the culture that we're in. Um, it's probably different than anything that we've experienced, maybe even different than things that our parents have experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't know the answers. Right. And that's okay. Like, we don't have to know the answers. Um, we just have to be able to make ourselves available right. to our kids and let them know that, that we're open to talk, that we're open mm -hmm. to yes. listen, yes. Um, and that, you know, also it's good for us to proactively check in with them, but mm -hmm. also that they know that um, you don't, you, can, you know, you don't have to restrict your time of talking to me um, right. to when I approach you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, right. the door is always open. Right, that's great. Yes. So, um, yes, yes. Uh, the next one is avoid language that might blame others and lead to stigma. Mm. Mm. Um, I think it's really important that we want to watch what we say around our kids at all mm. times. At all times. Right. Not just in this situation, yes. but um, we definitely don't want the children to develop uh, assumptions or stereotypes mm -hmm. or biases, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and... It, that's just stereotypes are just no good in general right. but um, in this situation I think that it's really important that we try to uh, unify and not isolate people right. Right. Exactly. as much as possible like we have to physically isolate already can we not emotionally do that as well Correct. Right. <laughs> exactly so right. yes um, especially because our, our, our youth 
they have just like us we have diverse colleagues they have diverse friends right, right. That's right. and They're I know true. when I was young like I would hear my parents like talking about things that I shouldn't have repeated that's right. but it would set a president right. in, my, in my mind yeah, right? And right. You, got, right. you got political um, right. people saying it's an Asian you right. know, it's disease from China. it's from China, it's from China. Yes. Like an, which is funny because so now there are more cases in America than right. other places country, right? exactly. so you don't want your kids you don't want to say something that, exactly. that can lead to any type of negative stigma right, and right. then your kid is on Zoom with their class saying ha 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 Asian right. people have no, like, yeah. and we need to we need to correct it happens. especially yeah. as yeah. saints and that has sense right? like, you saints love don't everybody no. right no. and that's so interesting because even in um, how we feel about our our leaders, our mm-hmm. political leaders, right? right? Mm-hmm. Kids are so, um, you know, the way we talk about our president, mm-hmm. the way we talk about different people, kids are really, really tuned into that. Yeah. I know yeah. my son, just recently, the way he started talking, I'm like, are you into politics? It's weird. I'm yeah, like, yeah. he's like, well, our president didn't do this, did, 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 did do this, mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, how do you know? So then it did, oh, thank goodness it did open up conversation, right? right? Yes. So we had a conversation about, um, a little bit about politics, a little bit about our, our leaders and things like that. And so I was able to hear what he thought, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I don't want to give out, you know, I don't want to give him um, any kind of false or, or any wrong assumptions about um, even our leaders or even about the political climate mm-hmm. that we're right, in, right? right. Um, you want the you want to respect as believers, we want to respect um our leaders in government, yes. right? Regardless of what we think. Amen. But they yes. listen to what we say. That's they true. listen to how we react. Mm-hmm. That's right? True. Yeah. So we have to be careful about that. Yes. Yeah, that has actually brought something to mind too. As a part, maybe a part of your homeschooling curriculum mm-hmm. can be to say, hey, you know, today Nia is your day to provide the coronavirus update. Oh, that's great. Like, I like what, that. You know, maybe mm-hmm. here and here the three websites you could choose from. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. Boundary, yes. The CDC, yes. Right. the Bible right. app. Right. Right. right, no Wikipedia. No. Right. No. 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 And Twitter has been this really great right. with that too because yeah. they're updated, and maybe the governor or somebody. Right. And then yeah. they say, okay, yes. today, here are the things that, that's like, somebody right. said, there's just three mm-hmm. points. Like, that's what did right. you learn? Because if they're conscious of what's happening and they're able to kind of understand, this is like history in the making. Like, it no, is. We didn't live through this, right? Yes. This is really unprecedented. Yes. And so, yes. just to, to, for, yes. to be able to speak eloquently about something that they yes. experience is really important. And then also, it gives them language to pray about. It Yes. God, yes. you know, yes. there are Man. 33% increase right. in cases. In- Yes. in Rhode Island, God. It gives right. them That's words right. to pray. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Um, so, that's actually a great, a perfect segue. So, the next was, pay attention to what your children see or hear on television, radio, and online. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny. So, uh, actually, before the shelter in place and everything uh, happened, but once they had decided that they were going to give a couple weeks off to the kids Mm -hmm. um they had went to the bay area Mm. and so they had went to the bay area on that saturday and then that monday was when everything was like shelter in place and things were escalating and so um that week i was at home i was working from home i couldn't go into my office but the boys were in the bay area with their with their dad and with my mom their grandparents Mm -hmm. and it was like Every day, 24 7 CNN. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. It was too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was too much. And I think it was probably for, yeah, a good four or five days straight. Right. And I'm actually happy that the boys weren't there for that. Yeah. Um, because yeah. that was overwhelming even for me. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And it so it is really overwhelming. Yes. So, yes. Um, you know, it's good to keep abreast of everything right. that's going on and to check in with the news, yes. but also make sure you check out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Absolutely. stay checked in the whole time. No. Um, and expect Especially not around your kids. Correct. Um, Because again, we, you know, what we present to them helps them understand how they should be reacting. That is Mm -hmm. so true. Mm -hmm. That is so so true. You do have to unplug sometimes. Yes. Um, Just like we have screen time for kids, right? Mm -hmm. This is a certain amount of time that you're allowed to be on your your devices or Mm -hmm. whatever, like um, things like that. 
you have to also limit like the news and, and radio. That's you right. limit yourself, right? Because you'll get so consumed with what's ha happening in the world. And a lot of times, because it's so negative, it's a lot of negativity coming at you all at once, your faith will start to like That's be right. affected yeah. by that. It will yes. start to diminish because you're yes. so in tune with what's happening yeah. that you're not listening or looking mm -hmm. to God, yes. right? Yes. And it'll take, it will. And, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I'm right. not like... Mm -hmm. Right. This is not something right. that I hear. This, this is what I mean. Yeah, this yes. is live. Right. This is experience, right? Yes. Sometimes I'm like, I have to unplug. Even on like, you know, um, social media, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm on Facebook because I want to be a part of the, the, to be a part of this. But I do have to limit my time because mm -hmm. all you hear is negativity. All you see is bad things. And it sometimes will start to pull you away and drain you. And then your faith will literally take a hit. No. So we have to, we have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to take a few seconds because we got a, we're streaming from a lot of different places, yeah. and so I want to recognize the folks that are streaming from our Progressive um, Church of God in Christ page. Oh. We have uh, Sister Erica Bean, yes. Missionary Hi. Laverne, hey. uh, Sister Amen. Keena Kemp, Elder Don Carter. Yes. He said, "Praise the Lord! Let's complete our day of worship." Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Mother Vicky Mac Williams, our youth Hi, church mother. mother. Uh, Sister Jack, Jessica Pedraza, God bless you. God bless you. God bless um, you. Stephen Andrade yes. is here Hello. with us. Um, those are folks from our progressive page. Zachary, yes. Zachary Young. Zachary Young. Welcome. Hey, Zachary Young. Hi there. And do we mention Cora James is on? Um, James. She's on oh. our YouTube, is it? That yes. is, uh, yes. This is YouTube, yes. Oh, you're on um, uh, the media ministry um, leader. Page, okay. Okay, okay. Yes. okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yes. You know, we're sure, we're going, if, if you're listening to us from Pastor's Page, we're coming to shout y'all out pretty soon, soon, too. Yeah, we'll get All right, there. we're on our way to, to shout yes. out the folks oh. that are listening mm -hmm. from, from Pastor. We will take comments and questions, questions. pretty soon. Yes, well. yes. Um, so, um, Sister LaPree is going to finish, finish up her session, and then we'll... Take okay. some questions. Oh. Great. Uh, so the next was um, teach children everyday actions to reduce the spread of germs. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a good one. Um, oh, but actually, sorry. Before that point, skipped over one of the other bullets. Mm -hmm. So the other one was provide information that is honest and accurate. Right. Yeah. Ma and make sure that the information that you share is age appropriate for the for the child that you're speaking to. Indeed. Uh, now. Teach children everyday actions to reduce the spread of germs. Uh, number one, stay away from people who are coughing or sneezing or acting sick. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's the CDC. That's 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 the CDC. Right. That came from the CDC. That came from the CDC. Right. Their words, not mine. But I'm in agreement. Okay? Right, right, right. That's right. Next one. Wash hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then, so I was thinking, I know that they had talked about the birthday song. Song, yeah. Sing the birthday song Twice. two times. Yeah. You might need to switch it up, you know, yeah. and switch songs. Itsy Bitsy Spider. Let's right. have a church song. What's a church song? I know, she, she right? the little children. The That's a good one. Song, like. God don't need no matches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. How many words do we versus do we do? <laughs> A praise break. Right. So praise breaks law. Right. Your hand washing needs to be a praise exactly. break law. Exactly. Yeah. And if you've been playing outside and you smell like Long outside. Right. Longer. Yes. Longer. Longer. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Yes. That that does matter. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Another another thing I thought as well, so my kids really like uh, timers. Good. Yeah. So you could That's have, good. if you have like a digital kitchen timer or something, yeah. you could always put that there mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Yes. Oh, Alexa. Alexa. That's another good one. Thank you, Brother Greg. Yes. <laughs> yes. Alexa, yes. put a timer for 20 seconds. Yes. Thank you, That's Alexa. It. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, um, yes. and then another, so what I saw online too was mm -hmm. instead of singing like the birthday song and things, I said, how about for 20 seconds you pray? I love mm -hmm. it. And so if you have a wall, I love uh, a gratitude wall, uh -huh. or if you have a list, a family list of prayer mm -hmm. requests, yes. you could be praying for one of those things love on your list. I love it. You gotta say, oh Lord, oh Lord, a few times. Lather it up in the spirit. Okay. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. And also, 
too. So I'm just gonna throw this in here too. Yes. You know, when your kids go to the bathroom and they're yes. going to wash in their mm -hmm. hands, you know, sometimes I won't necessarily say that I am a helicopter parent, right. but, but I'm a concerned Hover. parent. Right. So sometimes, you know, if you know that it seemed too quick, yes. let me smell or, right, right. Or, or just ask the question, did you wash your hands? Yes. Now did you use soap? Right. Oh. You have to do that. You have to exactly. do that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, like, I mean, my kids are teenagers and preteens, and sometimes still I'll ask them, like, did you do soap? So, yes. Yes. Then be, like, then be the rock. Yes. Right. And, and keep exactly. your hands away from your face and your yes. mouth. Yeah. I think that's what my, my, I have to teach my kids. Stop putting your hands in your, or stop picking up everything and putting it in your, in your face mm -hmm. or in your mouth. You have to be really, really careful. So just trying to drive those points home, it's hard, right? It's, true. it's hard. You're like, don't do that. It's do you true. understand? I saw it's this. Hard. I saw this video. Mm -hmm. um, it was like I was one of the the news shows. I can't remember which one, but mm -hmm. they did a study with a family, yeah. mm -hmm. and they put this like um, invisible like dust on them, yes. but they color coded it for the parents oh. and for the kids, mm -hmm. so they'd be able to identify which one it was mm -hmm. that was touching everything. And they went around the house. I think it was like a very short while too. It yeah. was like less than two hours mm -hmm. or something, and there were hundreds. Hundreds of oh, man. hundreds of finger places all over wow. the house, but also all over their face, all over their clothes, oh, all over everything. Yeah. And it's just you do it. That would you me just down. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't I know. You like, never I like know. That. Maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> right. 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 And I've been touching on my hair so much, people are gonna be commenting. Yeah. Why the free you touching on her hair? Don't tell us not to right. do it if you gonna do it. Right. It's like Joe Biden's yeah. cough, and everybody was like, oh no. <laughs> It's a prayer. It's a prayer to yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So you don't want to be extreme, but you still want to like right. get them to see the point, yes. right? right? To get them to see what's happening, but not taking it overboard. So mm -hmm. it's a That's difficult right. thing, right? It's mm -hmm. kind of hard to like. Yeah, keeping a balance. And, and it's a di it's like they don't understand that it's a different time that we live in. It's something mm -hmm. that we are fighting an in invisible enemy. That's right. And that's hard, like right? This is how do you fight something you don't know where it is, mm -hmm. right? right. Mm -hmm. So true. that's the thing, but you just don't want to go overboard. So, that's like right. you said, it's finding a balance. Yes, and there's a, a good balance. There's a, that's, that's a message. An yes. invisible enemy. An uh, invisible enemy. Uh, as a yeah. way to mm -hmm. teach kids about germs. Come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. Somebody teach, <laughs> Somebody teach that. Somebody teach that. It's still a wet right. white challenge. Teach that, right? Go wipe some right. down and we're going to come back with the dirtiest right. wet white as the winner. Right. Like, or not, or the loser. I'm a loser. I'm a loser. <laughs> loser. Praise yes. God. Okay, hey, we got a couple of um, folks that um, yes. Sister Shepherd said, The Fight is On, Oh Christian Soldier is a good song for young ones to sing. I don't know that one. Is on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, face to face and turn up. Mm -hmm. yeah, you better say it. You better say it. You better say it. We'll sing the victory song at last. I'm going to learn that one. I'm going to learn it. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember that. Okay. Thank you, Sister Shepard. Okay. Thank you, though, Mother. Okay. Sunday school song. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Kathy James said, what a, how about social distancing? I think we got that on our list. Yes, we'll talk yes. about well, that. We'll get to that. Thank you. Yes, we'll thank be coming you, Dr. Next. James. Yes. Sister yes. Um, Hunt, sir, said, you are, you are right, Dr. James. When I have my grandchildren, we have Bible, scripture, reading, and prayer. Mm -hmm. I, I was encouraged to hear Sadell pray. Yes, Amen. it is encouraging. Oh. Amen. Yes, it is um, encouraging. So uh, Sister Daniel, Dr. Daniel Seda said, that's the Sunday school anthem. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Anybody, uh, any words on, on the... Uh... Um, no, but welcome, Sister uh, Zell, Zell Agnew. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, Sister Chile. How you doing, girl? Mm -hmm. How are you? Hey, our California you? Northwest Youth Department President, Pastor Willie Haynes is on. God oh, bless him. Oh, God bless you. He sent, he sent me a note about a preferred uh, television station for Sister LaPria, so I shared yes. that with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, noted. Thank you. Thank oh, you. not sharing with you. Right. right. Share it with her. God bless you. I'm being obedient to leadership. Right. Thank Praise you. God. Okay, let's interviews what the topic is also. Okay, so yes, our, our topic. Thank you, Brother Greg. Thank you, Brother.
Our topic is parenting through a pandemic. So we've yes. been offering, um, so we talked about the spiritual side. Yes. Uh, Sister LaPria has told us what the CDC is saying and kind of go. And also I want to say that um, we will provide um, our notes. Yes. We yes, will provide our notes yes. because our notes have the links to everything that yes. we're talking about. Yes. We did not pick this up out of the air, although no. some of it just makes sense, right? right it's right. kind of right. common, common sense. Right. But yeah, okay. So um, we got a couple more things to do. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, Sister Makia is going to talk about how we can help uh, our children continue to learn. Yes. And after Sister LaPria, we have a surprise expert that we're going to call. Yay. We have a surprise expert that we're going to call to get some tips. Okay, yes. so, so Sister Makia, tell us how to keep a learning environment in the home. Yes, so this is a, um, this is something that we are kind of looking at here. It's and, I, and I'll be quite honest with you, um, when all of this happened, it happened so suddenly and it just fell in our laps and it, I, I felt like now I have to become a second grade and a fifth grade teacher. <laughs> right. And I don't have any formal training. I have no, no understanding. Their curriculum is so much different than ours were. Yes. The Common Core oh academic um, uh, program that they have now, I was not taught that way. Mm -hmm. And right. I already struggled when helping my kids with their homework. And I'm like, right. well, that's not the way they taught me to do it. I can show you how they taught me, but this isn't the way they're trying to teach you. So it's really different. So now we feel, we feel like we've been be we've been made to become teachers instantly mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but what we can do to help with our can help our children continue learning is first of all you want to stay in touch with their school that's right you want to be in touch with their school thank god um my children's school um they are very very big on com communication they communicate with us almost too much <laughs> I'm grateful, I'm grateful, but they do communicate a lot. Like we get emails like almost daily. Mm -hmm. um, they, the, the school district, the board is kind of sharing information with us. Mm -hmm. um, they are very good about um, telling us what the updates are, what they're trying to do. Um, so it's good that we get that information, but not every parent has that. Not every school is open with communication. This is what I will um, suggest. If your child's school is not communicating with you, communicate you communicate with them. Right. I know that's right. all. Yes. yes. You call, right. you email, right. you stay in touch with their school yes. if their school is not communicating with you. Mm -hmm. um, you. I would have an email address of maybe the, their specific teachers, mm -hmm. maybe the principal, and maybe the school district. So mm -hmm. you can reach out to them to find out what's happening, what their plan is. Right. Um, the Elk Grove School District right now is moving towards distant um uh, distant learning, I believe mm -hmm. they call it. Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, they're trying to get the kids set up to be able to um, learn from school, from home. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody has access to um, some programs. The kids do have programs that they can work on, digital programs mm -hmm. to work on math and reading and ELA. Um, my child, my um, son's teacher has been really good about calling us and they've had like an opportunity to do some Zoom conferencing. Mm -hmm. And it was a blessing for wow. my son because he got to see his classmates yeah. and he was they were so excited to see yeah. each other I just sat there and watched and they was like oh what are you doing is that your yes. house where do you stay where are you you know how you guys been and the teacher for a while just let them talk yeah mm. you know it wasn't like she she was there to kind of go over a lesson but she just let them talk because they yeah. miss they need that social interaction right. they do. and they they it was good for them to see each other mm -hmm. so I appreciate my my children's school um, for doing that but if your child's school is not then you reach out yeah. mm -hmm. be proactive yeah. mm -hmm. and reach out to their to the school um, keep them in constant communication um, like I said we get emails and now I even get a text telling me I got an email <laughs> they're like right. uh, we want you to know read, read that uh, email that we sent mm -hmm. um, so it's good keep in touch with them um, create a schedule and routine for learning at home but remain flexible mm -hmm. that's a great thing um, I was struggling that very first week I don't know about you guys but that very first week I was like listen I'm home but I'm not just home right I'm right. not just home right. sitting back and relaxing and being able to um, focus 100% on my kids. I, I'm home working, right? Mm -hmm. And so trying to get them to understand mom is home, mm -hmm. but she's not home. She still has to work. Yeah. Right. And I still 
I have eight hours of work, right? right. And um, I do need to focus on work at the same time. I have to focus on ki uh, my children. So what um, I had happen was I we were down here a few weeks ago, and Sister Paulina, who was homeschooled for mm -hmm. her entire education, mm -hmm. she sat down with me, and we did a we did a schedule for my kids, and she kind of just and we did two different schedules for each of them because they're different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Children are different, mm -hmm. two different grade levels, mm -hmm. um, so they need to they, so it has to be different to fit the child um, but we did a schedule for them so what that did was it took a lot of the pressure off of me because after the first week I'm like what can I do just to keep them busy like okay get the papers throw the papers at them like no go online do this uh, next what am I gonna have them do okay you get an hour to read you get an hour to, to do this like I didn't know what to do so I'm just like throwing stuff at them and they sense the chaos right they sense I don't know what I'm doing Right, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to have a better um, to be more structured, which would take the pressure off of me. So mm -hmm. we came up with a schedule, and now we put the schedule up on the um, on the board or um, up on my. Um, uh, the wall and so now it's it's 12 o'clock and they come to me well i want to i want to go outside what does your schedule say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go do what the schedule says right. Right? right i need you to stay on schedule and making sure they're up like yes. mm -hmm. yeah you you have you're like in school let's act like you're in school get up brush your teeth wash your face mm -hmm. get to this desk we need to be done with breakfast by nine o'clock that schedule is going to keep kids need structure yeah. Yeah. They, they need do. routine they do they just need they need it to thrive just like we do mm -hmm. yeah. so it's good that you know you have a schedule for them to make sure that it first takes this pressure off of you mm -hmm. but also helps them to stay structured what mm -hmm. do you guys think yeah I think it's great yeah. I love your ideas and I think yeah. it's I really like your idea about putting it up on the wall you're setting the expectations right, right. and then also right. too like you're saying like when you're at home you're you're you have to work you're right. expected to produce right. everything that you used to do <laughs> yes. at work away yes. from the kids exactly. and now it's supposed to be doing it at home right. with the with the kids a couple feet away from right you. i mean six feet away right. from you <laughs> right yeah six right. feet right. right but um but yes. you're you're already setting the tone yes. you're setting the expectations yes. so you know in the middle of typing up an email you don't all of a sudden have to have an argument right. and a long discussion <laughs> and, and you know like no, I'm gonna need you to do this. Why, why are you doing this to me right now? No, you're, you're literally just like, right. look at the wall. Right. Right. And then go right back there. Exactly. Right back to what does the wall say? Okay. The there wall you go. Says, I said what I said. Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I love that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does relieve some of the pressure that is, is put on you because mm -hmm. you it's, it tells you what you need to do, yes. right? Just follow the wall. Right? Right. Follow what the wall says. <laughs> and so that's something that I think is good for parents. Um, consider the needs and adjustments required for your child's age group. Again, children are different. like, yeah. And I think I'm, I'm really, really understanding that about my kids. They are so yes. polar opposites. They are yeah. so different. And I have to, you know, my my daughter can just rush through work and she just she can do it. Can you tell her more? to do something. Right, right. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's my husband. We have to keep her like, we have to give her can't double give her work. You like, you can't give her can't, enough. Can't give her she just like, she just speeds through work. Whereas my son, you'd be like, oh, you only got one page done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been two hours. <laughs> like, Watch your tongue. Right. Watch your tongue. You're talking about my cop. Right. Watch your tongue. <laughs> You're like, uh, that's what you did in two hours. You know, so yeah. it's like those things, like, so they're different. So you have to structure your um, your your curriculum or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing to their and their specific needs. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and you have to just know your children, mm -hmm. right? That's right. That's it's right. about knowing your children. And can I say this? Can I add this? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm asking, but I'm just going to do it. Do. Right? No. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. But, uh, the thing, uh, the, also the thing is, is that you have to, um, know your children, but then also know, um, their strengths and weaknesses, right? That's right? right? Know their strengths yes. and weaknesses. Um, you know, exactly. I like I said, my daughter, I just cannot like um, give her anything. I have to make sure that I challenge her. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to make sure that she's staying challenged, that she's just not being thrown something to do mm -hmm. real quick or whatever, but that she's being challenged. Yeah. And like I said, we have not been 
trained, formally trained right. to educate children, right? We don't we don't know everything that it takes to help them to get where they need to go. But that's why we have to rely first of all on God, right? right. <laughs> we have right. to pray. Help we have Lord. to yeah, I'm not even saying that the whole Lord help me. Help, help me. me because I don't want when they do go back for them to be behind. Yeah. Yes. You know, they they you don't want them to be struggling. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you um and then the, the other thing is connecting with people People who've been there, That's done right. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. We hey, were exactly. We've been right. a party. Right. Right. So right now, Sisters what's happening? <laughs> they are running rapid. Exactly. They are running in my house. Right. 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 But it's great to see God gives us resources and people that we can tap into. We have yeah. teachers at our school, at our church, yes. right? God has given people who are giving us people who can be resources to us and don't mm -hmm. mind sharing, right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. The, you know, thank God, like I said, like he said, mentioning uh, um, Sister Sylvester, she homeschooled four kids, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like from all the way up to high school, right? That, I, I don't know, know how she did it, but that's, right. Right. That's, that's, so hard. Hard. I know. God, that's a calling. No, right. <laughs> God right. called her to Not that. Not my calling. Not but mine, <laughs> so, so that's it. If you're watching and you want to call in, just Please call, do. call in. Yes. You know, tell, call in and tell us how you yes, did it. Exactly. She is gifted in that area. And God, it will, we can use those resources, right, to in order to really be successful in right. this. And that's why I believe God has given us right. gifts in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. yes. right? To edify us to mm -hmm. build us up to keep mm -hmm. to help us so keep yeah. that in mind and what i want to say too in this season is that this is something for us to pray for Amen. like as parents like lord yes. help me to be more consistent yes help me to become a tutor in an area that i don't necessarily I know. know like strengthen me in this area i know because i think that after this season when our children do go back to school yes. we become more hands-on parents I, right because right. i hear a lot of parents saying i just yes. don't know how to do this so i'm not gonna try right, right? like no. there are there are people that are spending a lot of money to get counseling and tutoring mm -hmm. for their kids to do things that if they just applied themselves they, yeah. they might be able to save some money that's and true. spend some time with their kids is, and so true. taking advantage of this season and asking God to give you the tools to be that at home teacher Amen. Elder Smith um, um, said um, distance learning is no joke nope. um, he <laughs> mentions his school um, star started last week and the teacher sent out a lesson plan that lasts from 8 to 4 plus homework wow. um, plus parents have to learn to separate being a teacher and a parent it's yeah. true breaks are essential for parents as well as students yes, yes. Breaks, self care self care right. and breaks are really important I would say to um to those of you who are teleworking, that's also a conversation for you to have with your employer. Like, yes. Um, so, as much as I appreciate the impromptu calls and yes. things of that nature, actually, I'm taking a hard stop at right. 11.30. Yes. Right. Like, I do that. Like, right. And I will circle back with yes. whomever needs. And yes. if you're a manager or yes. a supervisor, you can actually employ that with your employees to say, hey, I realize that you might have kids and you have things that you need to take yes. care of. Yes. I appreciated that my director said, hey, like you need to you need to stop emailing but I'm not gonna receive any email mm -hmm. from this time so that you can That's focus perfect. on mm -hmm. the things that you need to do. So having that mm -hmm. conversation That's to perfect. say, you know what, I'm homeschooling and just being honest with your employer is really important. Yes. Right? Yes. Because like you cannot adequately, you know, pay you got one child that's like, I'm done, I want more right. and then you have and then you got one child that you gotta go check on. Right. <laughs> like, you've been real quiet. Right what exactly you. have you been right. doing? Right. And so right. that's not you know, sometimes you're gonna have to do you're that during to. a conference call. Yep. Because, you know, yep. and so yep. creating the balance. And I think also sometimes we, when we talk about this, we're talking about traditional families with, yeah. with two-parent homes. Yeah. Not everybody has a two-parent home. Has that. So if you are a single parent, mm -hmm. like you, the, the, the job is even more difficult for yeah. you because you um, have to manage your career and you have yeah, to stay in contact and your kids. Yeah. And so yeah. we, as we are praying, don't just pray for your house, right. but pray for the single parent exactly. that's managing yeah. all Everything. of those. And so sometimes yeah. maybe the child is at their dad or their mom's house right. and they, and their that consistency is different. Yes. So true. Right? And so that's yeah. a that's an added when you have to be like, yes. hey, um, are they this, the, uh, the bell's getting ready to ring. Right. You're going to tell your ex-husband, ring, 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 ring. Right. Like, right. I guess you need right. to yeah. <laughs> right. Right. be learning. So creating yes. that, that consistency and thinking beyond just that two-parent home yes. and, the, and the difficulties and the complexities of, you know, yes. multi-home is important.
And then I think um, the also the other thing too is um, this takes a lot of preparation. Right. Yeah. Preparation is so key here, right? Mm. And it's almost like, and this is what I did learn from. Um, Sister um, Sylvester through by way of Paulina, right? Because <laughs> she because she was actually homeschooled. Um, the on Sundays and sometimes on Saturdays they were preparing for the week ahead, meaning they were getting out their lunches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were making their lunches. They were ma preparing their dinner, right? Mm -hmm. They also were getting um, their 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 paperwork and things like that ready so that the next week would be smooth. Mm -hmm. But that takes preparation, and I'm not mm -hmm. always that good at that, mm -hmm. right? I'm always I'm not like the type where I just want to go ahead and do uh, you know make my 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 dinner for the upcoming week. Uh, prepping right that's not really my thing but I see how essential it is for now for this time in order to be successful you have to prepare you can't just do things at the at the last minute and expect for um, you to be successful so preparation is essential when it comes to um, home homeschooling oh my god I can't believe I'm saying homeschooling. <laughs> This is learning. This That's thing learning. That this makes is learning. Better. I just feel like oh. I'm homeschooling. Right. right. But you have to prepare. Yes. Yeah. And you know, uh, Sister Makia, you had talked about being flexible, you yes. know, with the kids yes. and things. Yes. It's also important for parents to be flexible with ourselves Indeed. too. Indeed. We got to show ourselves you some do. grace. You do. You know, I have you very, do. very high expectations for myself yes. in yes. work and with, with the kids. You want to be hundred percent. I want to be a hundred percent all the time, no. but I can't, especially when I have to give a hundred percent to three or four different I audiences know. all at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very hard. Yeah. Um, like there is no car, uh, compartmentalizing right, you know, right. when you all are within the same however many feet You're square right. feet of your house. Right. And right. so um, I think it's important to, um, yeah, just show yourself some grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, um, I'm going to do the best that I can all the time. That's a given. That's right, what right, it is. Right. You know, but and sometimes my best doesn't feel mm -hmm. the, doesn't right. feel the best. But it is what it is. Exactly. But it's but it's but, but you know, I need to do whatever I can do and then the Lord will make up Amen. The, the remainder of it. You know, at the end of the day, if I can't, if I can't teach every single lesson, I'm sure that the kids are still going to do fine. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, they still going to pass the grade. You know, right. they're not going to all of a sudden flunk just because, right. uh, you know, they That's didn't right. do their one check-in on Thursday, April 9th or whatever right. it is. I'm just making up a date. April 9th might not even be a Thursday. Right. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> But I think right. I, I just think it's important for parents to also show ourselves some grace show as well. Grace. You know, yes. and uh, do what you can. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, um, mm -hmm. definitely tap into other resources. Yes. Yes. Put in the time. Put in the effort. Yes. Um, you know, honestly, at Progressive, we just have such phenomenal parents. Isn't it mm -hmm. awesome? Everybody's going to do it. Yeah. Everybody's going to put in the time. Yeah. Everybody's going to put in the effort yeah. and things like that. That like we already know that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just you know, make a commitment that you know during this season of transition. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, you know. I have to be agile. Mm -hmm. Right, you, know? you, do. you do. I have to. I have to uh, adapt. Yes, you yes. know, yes. and uh, and and that's what I'm going to do. What I'm required to do right yes. now. Yes, yes. Uh, until the Lord says different. And yes. can you can you put in place some incentives for yourself mm -hmm. and for your children? Can you reward yes. yourself? Yeah. Right, because this is hard. This is hard. It like, is. It's not, I, it there is. was one day, and I don't have any kids, but there was one day when I had like. Five Zoom calls. Wow! And I, I, I was sitting in the office in the same That's place no the joke. whole time, wow. and I was just like, "Oh my God, this right. is very stressful." Yeah. And I had to, um, I had to empathize with parents mm -hmm. who have five Zoom calls and five kids. I know. Right? Like, I how, know. how do you right. manage all that? Or like a lot of the, <laughs> the tips that Amazing. you see that are out yes. there. The oh, yes. take a walk and you know, take yes. your conference call and a walk. That's yes. easy to do yeah. when you don't got no right. kids. Right. Like, you right. can't just be all taking a walk. Right. Like, right. Right. We're going to teach you, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So <laughs> reward yourself. Reward yourself early and yes. often at the end of the day. You know, and I think another piece of that too is that if school is over at four and work is yes. over at five, put the books away. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Like, yes. Put the laptop yes. away. Yes. Like yes. just do a hard like we're gonna stop. We're we're gonna yes. stop being and we're just gonna be a family now. That's like, right. We were family before. Yes. But like I was a little bit of your teacher. Right. <laughs> like, right. You know, yes. and, and, and your and your technology yes. you know consultant yes. and your you know but just take some time to like turn some of that off and then decide within yourself how am I going to acknowledge myself because the reality is is that like the kids are probably not going to be like thank you mom for being a great right <laughs> like, you're the thanks, best dad. teacher ever you're the best teacher <laughs> ever like thank you for hooking up the right. zoom and getting everything set up and having a schedule they're right. not right. Gonna be gonna <laughs> say that so you're going to be feeling some kind of way right, right. 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 So, appreciate it right. Like, right. It's, and then also to schedule like um, just like you said time off or mm -hmm. like yes. time like we've been doing like um, a little a family walk like we'll just go walk mm -hmm. to the park yes. and it's hard right because Take your wife. yeah right right <laughs> And you have to explain to kids. It is so hard to explain to kids almost that they can't be kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the difficult part. Like, you're trying to explain to them, like, you can't just be free and be the, the child that you, you, want, you want them to be. You want them to just go and walk and jump on the jungle, the jungle gyms and swing and all of that. But you have to say, no, you can't, you can't touch those because you don't know, like, what's, what's on there. You have to be really careful. So that makes it even more difficult. Cold, right and and that's the thing you you have to find it takes a lot of creativity like how can we have fun but within this this space right, right. How, do, how can we right. how can we like just let let it all loose and but but also be confined right my kids have taken up playing monopoly and they're driving me crazy because wow. their dad taught them how to play monopoly and that's all they want to do and they are so Super competitive, and they fight, and mm. they argue, and they just like. But it's good to see that they're playing together, right? Yeah. And, yes. that, and that they are wanting to play with each other and wanting to do things as a family. That's mm -hmm. a, a, a blessing, right? Yeah. Um, but you have to figure out, be creative with things that you can do. Like um, in, on our schedule, we have things where we can do um, uh, arts, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I know my son likes drums, so God help us, you can play the drums for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Drive that's crazy. Yes. Like, yes. I should be quiet, but he's banging on drums, you know. Yeah, and yeah. my daughter likes to draw, and she likes to, you know, play different games and mm -hmm. make learning fun, yes. right? Yes. You don't mm -hmm. want to be in a classroom, and no one likes to be in a classroom environment all day, every day, right? right. You need to make um, learning. So we'll do stuff like we'll do some writing, some work, you know, with papers, and then it's like onto the computer. Have fun, explore. Right. Or, you mm -hmm. know, go outside and find things and you have to just make it fun and engaging for them um, so that they, they'll want to learn. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know? Let's That's see right. if we have any um, other folks that have logged in um, and said anything. We have a lot of folks on YouTube now, about 20. Yes. Oh. Um, is my phone. Yeah. Uh, hey, Sister uh, Raverna Bass. Dr. James is also on here. Hey. Um, let's see who else we, we have. Closer to you. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. And then, like we said, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to go ahead and put that in and we'll acknowledge or, or address him. Right, yeah. it's almost time for our guest. Yes, getting excited. Okay. Uh, you go ahead, Sister McKee, and look at y'all. Um, that's that was it actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, let's see. We're gonna check in with some of our. Um, do we have any? Can some folks check the progressive uh, stream to see who's on there? Talking to us. Yeah. I will check YouTube to see what's going on. Glenda Thurman. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sister Glenda Thurman. Hi, Sister Glenda. Hi. We miss you. Yes. Portia Hill. Hey, oh, Missionary Hill, 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 our, Hill. Our, our regional cheerlady. God bless, bless you. you. Yes. From Modesto. Yes. Sharon Tidwell. Hi, Hi Sister Tidwell. Hi, Sister Tidwell. Yes. Leo Smith. Leo Smith. Bishop Leo Smith. Oh, Bishop, 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 Bishop. Hey, Bishop. Hi, Bishop. Hey, 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 Bishop. God bless you, Bishop. We're, God bless you, Bishop. Oh, now we're going to go into a conversation. We got a good set of assistants. Praise the Lord. Everybody straighten up. God bless you. God bless you. All right, God let's see you. what we got going on. Yes. On, uh, 
Um, yeah, so Myrtle Shepherd, Sister Shepherd, she said good multitasking skills will be your friend. Absolutely. Yes, so true. Yes, true. Good multitasking yes. friends. We Very agree true. with that. Yes, Let's see. Fully agree. Yes. Um, okay, so we are coming up um, to, we're going to call our special guest. Yes, yes. And see if he answers the phone. He will. <laughs> <laughs> That's a church song. Hello? Hello, hello. Hello, you hello. might have to. <laughs> you might have to um, mute your stream. Wait. Okay, we might need a. In, uh, can you hear? Can I um, say something really loud, uh, Brother Gian? Hello, everybody. Okay, cool. Yes. Hi, Gian. Okay. Hi, Gian. Hi, Brother Bean. Yes. So, Hello, Brother Gian is is a phenomenal yes, a praise yes, and is. worship leader. Yes, he but is. But in addition yes. to that, we, let's clap to that. Praise God. Yes. He's anointed recording yes. artist. Yes. I mean, the, the list is long. Yes. But in addition to that, he's a career man and sure award is. winning after school program enthusiast. Yes. And he has been working in the field for how long, Brother Gian? Have you been working in the field? Um, nine Nine wow. years. Okay. So, Brother Gian knows what he's talking about yes, when it yes, comes yes. to child engagement. And I don't know how you've been, you've been watching, you've been hanging out with us for the last hour or so, right? Yes, I have. Okay, so you kind of know what we have been talking about. Um, from your vantage point, tell us a little bit about how to keep kids engaged yes, from an yes. expert. Yes. Yeah, um, you guys did some really great things. I do want to point that out. Um, really, really great things. A couple of things that are really important are children need routines. Routines. Um, at school, kids know what to expect, and sometimes at home, um, in that environment, things can be a little less clear. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've experienced this myself as an adult working from home the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, week one was rough. The second yeah. week, I needed a schedule. Right. Um, kids are going to need a schedule. So, Sister Key, you mentioned it earlier. Um, so oh, definitely take some time to establish new routines and even sharpen some of the old ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be flexible, and you also want it to be consistent. Right. Um, yes. And that daily that daily routine is going to be extremely beneficial for both you as the adult, but also for your students and children as well. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that is that's really important. A lot of times we talk about in school is a youth voice and leadership mm -hmm. at work mm -hmm. and. That's pretty much this idea of students have buy-in or youth have buy-in when right. they're involved in the decision-making processes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, having children or teenagers help plan the routine for the day, um, like okay. making the school timetable or um, planning out some of the smaller details, they'll follow them better All if right. they're helping to make it. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then a, a couple of things that um, really help is building, you want to build time for education, you want to build in some time for physical activity. Um, yes. Kids are not really good at being sedentary. Um, they want to be up and moving and around. Right. So you want to give them that physical activity time, whether it's like Sister McKee was mentioning going for a walk around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, me and my sister have been doing a lot of chess dance. Mm -hmm. oh, um, oh, yes, a little yeah. like getting moving, yeah. getting moving and not even having to leave the house. Um, do, they have, do they have God Don't Need No Matches uh, as one of the songs? <laughs> is, is one of the songs God Don't Need No Matches? Is there, is there a church playlist on Just Dance? I don't know, but we can make one. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Make us a playlist so we can right. do it. We're, we've been Just trying to convince uh, Sister Brittany to come and record her herself. Um, she's doing a lot of praise and worship uh, praise dances and that we can oh, follow. Nice. <laughs> I like it. So maybe, yeah. maybe some uh, some more of us can help convince us to bring or even a sister Isolicia yeah. to record some videos that we can follow at home. Yes, yes, um, brother Gian. <laughs> That's great. Um, some yes. some other things that I listed as far as keeping kids engaged um, is you want to build them some time for some indi uh, individual attention. Mm -hmm. So um, oh, just spending yeah. some time just to spend time with your children one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. talking to them about things that they like their interests 
Um, it doesn't have to be super formal. It can just be hanging out with them for a little bit yeah. to kind of break up some of the monotony of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, also, building in time for um, independence mm-hmm. and also time for connection. Mm-hmm. So having a balance of, okay, I want you to be able to work by yourself for a set amount of time, right. and then we'll come together, do some stuff together, and then we'll go back. So that way they kind of learn how to time manage and also are learning how to work independently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gian, you have to send us this outline. This is some great stuff. Yes, right? I, I will, I will yes. do that. Yes, please. <laughs> We're going to have a progressive youth department, how to, t- how to teach a child at home yes. booklet. We do. Right. Oh, right. Yes, Resource yes. guy yes. corner. Yes. On yes. Absolutely. With a, with a 1 800 number. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to your cell phone. Right. 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 Gia. That would be really good. These kids will not do an activity. <laughs> right. Man. Yes. Thank God. Yes. Um, some of the other things that I think help to keep students engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's really easy to put children in front of a screen, and it can be very tempting. Yeah. Um, but you want to remember that limiting screen time is a necessity. Yeah. So trying to find a healthy balance for your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the younger the children are, the more limited screen time should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so making sure they're taking breaks, you know, it's not... It's easy to say, like, oh, I'm engaging them by them watching Netflix or Disney Plus or mm-hmm. whatever streaming service or YouTube, mm-hmm. but that's actually the opposite. You want to make sure they're getting some breaks um, from all of that screen time. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I think um, someone mentioned it earlier. I think uh, you may have read it, a comment, but being able to separate parenting from being a teacher mm-hmm. right. um, yes. and trying to keep education, keep keeping education fun rather than being a chore yeah. because... Uh, we talk about it a lot all the time. In, when students start to see education as a chore, they're, they're less open to learning and they're less Absolutely. open to the experience mm-hmm. of education. Mm-hmm. So it's super important that you're looking for ways to make it fun. I always think about when I was a kid, um, when I was learning my colors, mm-hmm. my mom would label the colors on all the things around the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I'd have to go and find red and find blue and I was reading and so it just made it a much more yeah. uh, fun experience. Oh, I'm um, that. One ex- teacher extraordinary. Right. Right. She's a teacher. <laughs> That's great. Um, one, ex- one activity that I um, usually like to play with my kids at work that I think is adaptable um, at home is we used to call them spelling relays mm-hmm. um, where you have a piece of paper set aside and you spell, if I say the word is dog, um, you have to run to the paper spell the word dog uh, if you have like a couple kids or maybe it's you and your child whoever can spell it first gets the point then you say the next word you have to run from one point so that way you're getting physical activity and you're getting uh, you know your spelling practice in as well Mm -hmm. nice nice Mm. yes Great idea. Brother Grant, brother, brother Gian, we really appreciate you taking the time to call in do you have any final remarks for us yes um I just I had a, a, couple, a list um, of some more activities okay. uh, that I found on a website, which I, I uh, believe I emailed to you already. Yes, I've seen that. Um, yes. But kind of just broken down by, by age level. Okay. Um, so it's like if you have a baby or a toddler, um, some things you can do when we're talking about maybe spending some time with them one-on-one, okay. um, singing songs, making music with pots and spoons, mm-hmm. stacking cups or blocks, mm-hmm. telling stories reading a book, um, sharing pictures, things like that, mm-hmm. um, copying their facial expressions or sounds or having mm-hmm. them try to mimic your facial expressions and sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have younger, uh, like younger child that might be older than a baby or a toddler, mm-hmm. reading a book, looking at pictures, going for a walk, dance to music or singing songs, do a chore together. Okay. Um, Eat, cooking together, yeah. and then you know, the helping with schoolwork, and then very well. yes, Colbert. Oh. Come on, Colbert. Yes, Colbert. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they look good. Yes. Might need to drop on by. Right. Amen. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and then for for your teenagers, um, talk about something they like. It could be sports, music, friends. Um, and then exercise together uh, to some of their favorite songs, or to some of their favorite music. Yes, yeah. yes. So, Gian, one um, quick question. Yes. How do you really, I, I think this was good, managing anxiety due to uncertainty mm-hmm. or separation from their friends? Mm-hmm. How do you manage that? Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's a hard one, huh? I I would say as far as managing the uncertainty, um, it's something that we've been trying to talk about at work in general is how to, what information are you sharing um, for parents? You know, how are you talking about it? Um, I think one, one way that parents can help to manage anxiety is being mindful of the news intake mm. um, and how, how you talk about the news to your children right. or even how you talk about the news when your children are around. Right. Um, because your discussion about everything that's going on can either increase or decrease their anxiety. Right. Um, so you want to really be mindful of how you're talking about it. I think um, creating a open space for your child to be able to talk and speak to you and communicate about how they're feeling um, is super important. Um, that comes from, you know, being open and listening, right? I'm not cutting you off when you're trying to get your sentence through. I'm letting, you know, letting the child talk about exactly how they're feeling and then being honest and also being supportive. Um, I think as far as, you know, maybe missing out on some of their friends, um, I know a lot that, you know, with the technology that we have now, there's FaceTime, there's Zoom, you know, trying to, if there, you can't schedule physical play dates, maybe it's scheduling a, like, virtual call oh, no. or mm -hmm. um, some sort of, That's nice. um, some sort of FaceTime. I know yesterday, um, the young adults, we had a Zoom yes. brunch call. That was so cool. <laughs> um, <Okay. just> to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just to see everybody's face, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, trying to connecting with mm -hmm. one mom to another mom or to the other mom parents mom. saying, hey, let's, mm -hmm. you know, we can get our kids together on FaceTime so they can talk for a little bit, um, kind of see each other. And yeah. it kind of helps to bring that community without worrying about the physical, mm -hmm. uh, the physical community right. to kind of still do that connect digitally. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Gian. Well, Gian, Thank we appreciate you, you calling welcome. in. Would you, would you be interested in being a guest on our show one of these days? One of these days. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> one of these days. Yes, on our show. <laughs> <laughs> one of these yes. days. One of these days. Would you come back and hang out with The View? Right. <laughs> the, the PYD right, right. The, the PYD View. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Gian. Thank we appreciate you. you. Yes, and thank um, you. thanks for the right. tips. Thank that, you. I know you sent some information. We will get that out Please to do. the progressive yes. parents. Yes. And um, also, right. um, Brother Gian is in the progressive parent group me. Okay. So if folks have questions and they want to reach out to him or they want to put those questions in the group me, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a progressive parent and you're not in the group me, let's get you in the group yes. me um, yes. so that we can um, engage with you. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Gian, we appreciate you and have a blessed evening. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Gian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you. All right. Yes. 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 Okay, so we have had a great session. Yes. Um, and we appreciate you. So what we want you to do right now is if you are viewing this still, can you put in the in the in the uh, mess comment section other topics that you would like for the youth department yeah. to cover, mm -hmm. other activities, things that we can do in the future because we want to continue this dialogue. Yes. Uh, we want to be able to bring guests and have folks talk about things that are important. Also, uh, so put in the comments anything that you want us to talk about. You can put it in if you're PYD parent, you can put it in the um, PYD uh, mm -hmm. group me, mm -hmm. um, and we will continue to um, have some things. Um, also, I just want to let you know that I had yesterday started um, calling all the youth and the parents <laughs> yes. um, just to reach out and to make sure that we're staying connected. Mm -hmm. So um, I hadn't got to everybody, but we're certainly going to be calling. The staff will be calling just to check in. If your children have a prayer request or they want to talk um, to their youth pastor or youth leaders, like you have my phone number you can always reach out for prayer. You call with them. With them. You know, and if they, need, if they, feel like they need some privacy, I appreciate one that you've said, well, I didn't want to tell the youth pastor what my prayer request was because I hadn't talked to my parents about it. Right. And I really appreciate right. that, right? right. But, but then the parents need to follow up on that and say, right. well, so what is your... Right. <laughs> what, is your what is it that, you know... But, but I think that that's brilliant that, mm. that, uh, that, that youth are thinking about the end. These our children and we need to remember that our children have spiritual needs yeah. right and they have things that um, they um, need to we do have um, they have things that we need to address in their spiritual life and their spiritual growth so um, a couple of questions because we have just a little bit of time one question um, came through how do we transition from spring break um, to learning 
Mm. And um, I think um, we have kind of talked about um, a number of things, but I think it's really about culture. And if you think about the way that your teacher, uh, the, your child's teacher does in the classroom, they set up things that are conducive. And so you might have to rethink about the environment where the learning Indeed. is taking mm-hmm. place. Indeed. You know, I'm not saying like put up a sign that says, it ain't spring break no more. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a learning corner. Well, you could. <laughs> Whatever works. Right. <laughs> Break mindset. Right, right. back to school now. Right. 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 Back to school now. Right. 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 Like, get your kid a new right. outfit. Like, right. you know, right. I'm your outfit for tomorrow. Right. <laughs> because you're going back to school right. tomorrow. Right. <laughs> I mean, there are other things that, like, I think that also, too, if you you think about, like, you know your child very well, if they are, like, washing their Air Force Ones and, like, you know, and, like, really taking care of the way that their outfit looks, like, maybe, you know, to to create that culture, you're saying, hey, do you want to take a picture and put it on your Instagram with your outfit? Outfit of the day. You know, like, the the, the, the new quarter's going to start with Spirit Week. And so every day, you know, everybody's wearing orange or everybody's wearing blue. Everybody's yes. wearing Air Force Ones or whatever it might be. Yes. So you have to be intentional about that. I think that be- between um, Sister Makia and Sister Ginevra and Brother Gian, the things that I and the folks that have chimed in, mm-hmm. we're really talking about creating culture and making adjustments. That's what it is. Absolutely. So as parents, Absolutely. you need to be in prayer. <laughs> right, you need right, to be thinking right. innovatively about That's how to right. minister and how to teach your children, right. and you need to be using your resources. Yes. And so, you know, yes. just like we don't want our children to be lazy, we like can't. we can't be lazy That's too. So, so maybe right. you pick that That's day, right. Sunday evening. That's you know, you're going to go through curriculum. You're going to yeah. look at schedules. Well, right. you know, this week, I have to go to the office one day. So right. that I know that I'm going to, so maybe making out your schedule um, mm-hmm. and maybe you need um, some supplies. Um, if you need some supplies or like a large piece of um, paper, yeah. butcher paper yeah. or something like that, like hit, put us, put this in the, um, in the PYD group me and we can see what we can do to get right. you some surprise to help you. I got like 99 color Sharpies. Yes. So like, right. as long as you give them back to me, you know, right. like, not yours. Right. Right. And then we're not saying go to your office and still no office of mine. Right. But, right. Things, but things are close, yeah. right? And so yeah. there might be some things that you that you need to help that. I think <laughs> art to, if you wanna, you know, it's, if it's spring quarter and you wanna make, you know, a spring quarter bulletin board, decorate your gratitude cool. board. Yeah, do it. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and, you know, School starts tomorrow. Yes, like, right. yes. So yes. I think that, that, that there are some good ways, and we will continue to have these dialogues um, with you all. We really appreciate it. The, first of all, we want to just thank God for our pastor, thank um, yes. the superintendent, yes. administrative yes. assistant, Benny O. Tolliver, yes. for yes. allowing us the thank space you. to exercise this innovation. Yes. We want to thank God for our media ministry. Yes. 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 Why yes. Yes. Uh, Why did your voice go? <laughs> She's a new answer. Yay! 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 Uh, we thank God for our media ministry. We thank God for Sister Makia. We thank God for Sister uh, LaPria. And we thank God for all of you. And hey, if you guys want us to continue this, you like uh, what we have yeah. done, just let us know. We'll be back next week. All right, all right. Will we be back next wait, week? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk wait, about wait. next week. Let's talk about wait, wait. 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 I got to go through my kids' children's schedule right. and my work schedule right. to see if I'll be back right. next week. That is. We'll be back next week. We all know that. The me and Brother Grant. Right. Right. With a new guest, if we cannot yes. sustain. Yes. <laughs> right. Already trying to kick us out of the show. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So also, um, Progressive has a lot of things that are going yeah, on, yes. and we are trying to do our best to engage the whole family, so we want to remind yeah. you of a couple of things. On Tuesday night, we want you to tune in to Bible Band. We have Amen. two excellent teachers. Yeah, One yeah. is with us today, Amen. Sister Lafia Ginevra. Yeah, I'll be back. And, uh, you'll be yeah. back. Oh, yes, you you're will. You're a regular. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sister Lafia Ginevra yes. and Sister uh, uh, Sherry, Sherry Tober. Awesome Amen. Now, they're talk about being an overcomer so you Amen. really don't want to miss that and this is the season to validate the fact that you are an overcomer and we want you to join and then on Thursday yes. Thursday will be pastoral teaching and Amen. I don't know about you but last week pastor really yes. really ministered Ooh, to us Amen. and he encouraged Amen. us yes. to 
to, to be thinking about a time of prayer and asking God to do something amazing in an unprecedented yes. time. So we thank God for our pastor, and we're going to tune in to uh, whatever he has to say um, yes. to the Progressive Church of God in Christ, and we're going to share that. We're going to create groups. We're going to call our friends and say, hey, it's Bible Band, it's pastoral right. teaching. And then, I don't know about y'all, but the, you, some of you may not have been able to be um, in the sanctuary today. There were um, 10 ish of us in the sanctuary today and we had church (laughs) we the spirit of the lord was so heavy in in there we were praised and magnified if y'all would have been with us there wouldn't have been too much we would have been able to because and i know you praise god at home and so a lot of this is us giving God the glory yeah. and God using the gifts of the members that we have. And I yes. see yes. a lot of churches that are having to scramble to come up Ain't with ways to Ain't minister and, and, and things. Yeah. And what I realize is that we are a blessed church yes, because we, we, we didn't have to find somebody. We didn't have to, have, didn't have to beg nobody. Yeah. We just, the, uh, the saints just really, yes. really yes. came yes. together, put good. our thinking hats on and yes. found a way. And it's really a collective effort. That's right. It's really collective effort and and the same time. And so we want to just encourage you in the Lord to remember that even though we are living in perilous times in the last days that you can have hope in Jesus Christ. That is the the key to parenting through a pandemic. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And you take that hope and you hide it in your heart and then what you do with that hope is you decide to plan every day for the future. You decide to train your children. You decide to leave you lead your family, yes. you decide to cook a real meal, yes. whatever it is, yes. you, <laughs> you, decide you, to you, do you it. have right. to decide yeah. to move forward in yes. the grace that God has the given God. us yes. and not to be afraid yes. and not yes. to worry. Whatever is happening is going to happen. Yes. <laughs> right? And so we, we, we love you. We yes. thank you for spending yes. the time. Do y'all have any closing remarks? No. This has been beneficial right. though. Right. Right. Oh, yes, we are. Um, we're going to ask um, our, our sister, LaPria. We got all kind of prayer warriors. In here. I don't even know. I don't even know. But this is like the prayer warrior. We can set it off right now. Right, right now. Go Something in. Something's going to happen in this closing prayer. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> we put the same down. Okay. Yes. And now for the prayer right. that will end the coronavirus <laughs> pandemic. Kia, yes. pray us out. <laughs> That's no pressure, right? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Let's see what your relationship is like. I'm glad it's on that side. <laughs> the hour, one, two, three, go. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> But Lord, we Father, we just thank you, God, for this day. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you for um, just this opportunity, God, just to gather, just yeah. a fellowship, God, of um, like-minded believers, God. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, God. You are yet God. You are yet awesome. Thank you, Lord. you yet sit on the throne, God. You are yet sovereign, and we praise you, Lord. We thank you, God, just for this gathering, God, that we had, Lord. Just the opportunity, God, to share, um, God, just um, on your word, Lord. Help us, oh God, as parents, God. Strengthen those parents, God, that are out there right now, Lord. We pray for strength, God. We pray for direction, Lord. God, we pray that you would help us, God, to understand the responsibility of raising our children in the way that they should go, God. Help us, God, to train them, God, in the right way, God. Help us to put you first in everything that we do, God. Everything that we say, Lord. Even the way we act in front of our children, God. Help us to exemplify you, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for strength for God, all of those parents, God, those single parents who are doing it on their own, Lord. We pray, God, that you would upgird them, God. We pray, God, that you would give them strength and direction, Lord, and how to raise their children and teach their children, Lord. God, we pray, God, for all those couples, those married couples. God, strengthen the marriages out there right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for your strength, God, your power. We rest in you, Lord. And we know, God, that you are going to take us through this time, God, that we're going to come out even better, God. We thank you for the hope that you've given us, God. We hold on to you, God. We hold on to your word and your promises, God. We pray even through this situation that you would build our faith, God. Help us, God, to be more connected to you, God. God, be more sensitive to what you're saying, God, in this time, God. Help us to spend more time with you, God, and also spend more time with our family, God, and with our children, Lord. 
Draw us closer as a unit, God. Help us to stand strong against the forces of the enemy, Lord. The things that the enemy is trying to bring our way, God. We pray that you would help us to stand strong in you, God. Thank you for our pastor, God. We lift him up before you right now. Thank you for our first lady, God. Continue to strengthen them, Lord. Continue to touch their physical bodies, God. Strengthen their spirits, their hearts, God. Help them, God, to be strengthened in you, God, and to be to get the direction that they need, Lord. Give them clarity, God, in the name of Jesus. Every direction that you have for them, God. We pray for clarity, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for the mothers of the church, God. We thank you, God, for the leaders and the elders of the church, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us, God. God, those spiritual gifts, those spiritual gifts that you've given to edify us and to build us up, God. We thank you for that right now. We thank you for the body of progressive, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen us and unify us, even in our own homes, Lord, that you would unify us as a body, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to be lights, God, that shine in darkness, God. We thank you right now, God, for covering us, God, and strengthening, God, the body of Christ. Raise us up in this hour, God. Raise us up in this time, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, for all the things that you're doing, God. We thank you for the work that you're doing in this time. And we praise you for it right now, God. All those that tuned in, God, give them a special blessing, God. In the name of Jesus, go in those households, God, and reign and rule in those households, God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it right now. We will trust in you. We rely on you. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening and welcome to the YPWW Live presented by the Progressive Church of God in Christ Youth Department. Tonight we have a special program for you. It will feature families here at the Progressive Church of God in Christ talking about things that are important in this season. We want you to know that we are in regular prayer for you and your family. And we are asking God to heal the land. We're asking God to make the difficult things of this season easy. And we're asking God to provide for each of the families here at our church. We hope that you will enjoy this session and that God continues to bless you and your family. Tonight, we have the great honor of having for hosts Brother Chris and Sister Denisha Colbert. They will be leading us through tonight's segment, Family Matters. Denisha and Chris. Thanks, Elder Bomonte. First, give an honor to God, who's the head of our lives. We'd like to thank Pastor Dr. Benny L. Tolliver for affording us this opportunity to moderate tonight's session on Family Matters. This is my lovely wife, Sister Denisha Colbert, and I am Brother Christopher Colbert. And as we said, we're going to moderate tonight's session on Family Matters. Let's start with a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us another opportunity to come to you again, once again. We ask that all of the viewers, whatever it is that you'd have for them, that they would receive whatever the message that's going to be for tonight. We have some wonderful speakers. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the, bless the land. We ask that you look over all of those that are less fortunate than ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this segment, we're going to talk about ways to encourage families to practice God-centered habits when it comes to handling money and finances and really learning what it means to be a good steward over what God has given you. Most of us have learned various different financial information or may have even grown up learning bad financial uh, situations in terms of overspending and not saving and various different things. So ultimately, we're going to talk about some ways that you can be more stewards or be more uh, responsible with your funds. You make a good point of the way we've learned about different uh, practices with money. What are some things that you learned growing up? I remember very vividly my father saying uh, a couple things. One uh, specifically is uh, if you if you borrow some money, uh, pay it back, of course. But in terms of lending, he was very much so against um, uh, if you if you loan someone some money to be prepared for them not to pay you back, basically. Mm -hmm. One of the things I learned growing up was that credit cards were for emergencies. And so, of course, we later learned that is not the truth. Right. Uh, so we, we decided to become intentional with our money a few years back. Um, 
after we went through the Financial Peace University um, at one of the local churches. Yeah, it was important for us to get on the same page because a married couple can accomplish so much when they're on one accord. Some of the things that we learned in Financial Peace University um, was how to pay off debt, um, how to save money, as well as um, making sure that you have life insurance, which is a very big situation uh, currently with the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So next, we're going to talk to Elder Gilmore about uh, what life insurance is and the importance of having life insurance. Hi, thanks for having me. I am so excited to be here with you. So, Elder Gilmore, please explain to us what life insurance is. So many people um, want to know what life insurance is, and many people have um, different thoughts and have heard different things about life insurance. Life insurance in its basic form is nothing but a contract, and it's a contract between an individual and an insurance company, typically the policyholder. And the insurance company, the insurer, we'd call them, uh, is the one that would pay a death benefit upon the death of the insured. And they would pay the death benefit to the beneficiary of the individual. So they do this in exchange for premiums paid typically on a monthly basis by the uh, policyholder. Thank you, Elder Gilmore, for giving us that information of what life insurance is. Thank you. Can you tell us why life insurance is important and what are some of the benefits of having life insurance? Life insurance sometimes for families uh, that depend on the breadwinner and say the breadwinner passes away, life insurance becomes the difference between living comfortably or living on the street, being homeless. Uh, life insurance also brings peace of mind. It brings security to a family. Uh, a wife wants to know that they are secure if anything should happen to the breadwinner of the household, the husband. So life insurance in itself uh, is a dream keeper. Uh, it also provides uh, needed funds at a very difficult time. Um, the cost of funerals are very expensive today. It's not cheap anymore. And that definitely puts a strain on a family who doesn't have the assets to be able to take care of their, uh, the final expenses for their family member. So life insurance provides that and it, um, gives the springboard for the family to continue on, to live in the same neighborhood, to live in the same house, for the children to go to the same schools and not have to leave their friends. So life insurance is a very precious asset. And at the base of every good financial plan is a life insurance policy. Elder Gilmore, what would you say to a young family that doesn't have life insurance, but is currently on the fence about purchasing life insurance? The importance of life insurance for a young family for a young family starting out, uh, maybe not a lot of funds or whatever, uh, when we look at that, death is uh, indiscriminate. You know, when we have attended funerals in the past, there are tiny caskets and there's large caskets. In other words, uh, children as well as adults. So we never know when we're going to leave here. And the important thing when one has a small family, they can get a decent policy in a large amount, which we would call a term policy. The premium on that is very manageable. And it's very important to have that for the family so the family will have security. These young children, they're going to go to college one day. Well, how do we guarantee that they will go to college? If we save, we can do that, but we don't guarantee that we'll be able to continue saving. Uh, if we become disabled, for instance, can we continue saving? No, we won't have the extra money at that time. But typically, a life insurance policy, a good one, and a good term policy will have a waiver of premium on there, which will waive the premium for one who has become disabled. So it's important to look at these things and consider the families. Uh, young family, yes, you get it then. And the secondary piece of that is that typically someone is in good health when they're younger. When people wait till they're in their 50s and 60s, you know, the body's had a lot of wear and tear, and certainly uh, many maladies of health have, um, have attacked that body. And individuals then uh, may not qualify for the life insurance they're looking for, but a young family and a young individual can certainly qualify with a lower premium than it would cost an older individual who would apply for that life insurance at that time. That makes sense, Elder Gilmore. Life insurance is cheaper uh, to purchase now, typically because we're uh, more healthier in our younger state. Correct. And income protection is imperative, especially for 
couples like us in the event of a loss of a spouse for things like our kids' college tuition, make sure that we're covered. Got it. So how would you explain to someone that doesn't see the purpose in life insurance or um, that's looking for some type of living benefit, you know, as opposed to always hearing that life insurance is for those that pass away? Well, the living benefits of a life insurance policy, um, what it means basically is that an individual does not have to die to participate in that policy. Uh, we have riders today. I had mentioned one um, earlier. I had mentioned one earlier, and that was the disability uh, rider, which is called waiver of premium. If a person becomes disabled, that person can benefit from that policy because the policy will stay intact and the insurance company will take care of the premiums. Uh, if a person becomes terminally ill, there's uh, a benefit on there called the accelerated benefit rider. And that covers individuals for terminal illness, for critical illness, for critical injury, as well as chronic illness. So with all of those, they can trigger benefits from the face value of that policy. And it can help that individual find uh, necessary dollars to cover necessary things that they have going on. Bills, it may be. In the case of a terminal illness, uh, you don't have to use that for a specific purpose. Uh, you can use the monies and take your family to Switzerland. Maybe that's the last trip for the family and you're taking pictures and chronicling uh, your time together because you know you have 12, depending on the plan, 12 months some require, some are allowed 24 months. But uh, with that, you know that it's going to be a claim soon. So the family can access um, a large portion of the face amount of the policy to be able to take that trip or they may need to do home improvements, or they may need to do to pay off uh, debts uh, that they like to pay off prior to them passing because of a terminal illness. Uh, so that is uh, one of the living benefits. I mentioned the others, the chronic illness or chronic in uh, injury or critical illness. These are things also, and with those, uh, you can still access uh, monthly benefits off of that that will pay you uh, while you're going through that particular illness. And if I want to get life insurance for my family, where would you say I start? Well, one good thing is to start, of course, with an insurance agent. You need an agent. You can't just purchase insurance on your own. Uh, you need an agent that's, of course, licensed in the state of California, if you are living in California, to be able to write the insurance for you. Of course, we have resources right here at the Progressive Church of God in Christ. And, um, Individuals here would be uh, more than happy to sit with you who have experience and who are agents and who are certified by the state and licensed by the state of California. So the starting point is to sit down with an agent because the agent will then ask you the necessary questions, doing a needs analysis to find out what your particular needs are. They'll ask you what you're looking to accomplish with your life insurance. And they can share information with you so that you can get a good picture. They can educate you on what life insurance is about and how it can actually work for you. So it is important to sit down with an agent, someone who knows what, what's going on. It's nice to talk to friends and family, but an agent can actually guide you because they're trained in that area to guide you through um, the ins and outs regarding life insurance, how to apply for the insurance, uh, what to apply for, and what will actually fit you. Um, many people go after just a certain product, and actually not everybody wears a size 6 shoe. Uh, so there are different type policies for different needs. So it's important to, again, sit down with an individual who can help you, and your resources are right here within reach. And the individuals would love to help you and uh, assist you uh, with purchasing your life insurance. You bring up a good point about sitting down with the licensed agent. I know the first time we purchased life insurance, we didn't really know what we want. And we ended up underinsured. So later on, actually a few years later, we sat down with an agent. We purchased a life insurance policy and we really understood what we needed. So we have a full cover policy that we have right now. Honey, we've talked a bit about... Um what we can do for the future. Let's talk to our guests a little bit about what we can do for the current state right now. Yeah, we're talking a lot about finances. So let's talk about people getting their stimulus checks. Um, hopefully you haven't spent them already. Uh, if you haven't, we're going to talk to Sister Watts, who's going to share some information about what you can do with your stimulus checks. You know, approximately 70 million Americans are expected to get a stimulus check in the next several weeks. 
Now, I know maybe you're not one of the 70 million, but perhaps you are. And you may be asking yourself or have asked yourself, what are a couple of things I could do? What are at least three things I could do with the stimulus check money? Well, the first thing I would do as a financial professional was would tell you to start an emergency savings. Um, some people call it a rainy day fund, but an emergency fund is basically a sum of money sitting in a bank set aside for a particular emergency, such as maybe a car repair, um, medical expense, and even sometimes most people are facing a job loss. Many Americans during this pandemic time never would have imagined that they would not only have to worry about their health, but also now worry about the loss of a job. And having an emergency fund would pretty much pay for certain expenses like their mortgage, their rent, um, things that come up on a monthly basis they could take care of and maybe have three to six months of that money set aside and not have to worry uh, about their funds until another job may arose or we get out of this pandemic crisis. Typically it's recommended that we put anywhere from three to six months, as I mentioned, of our monthly expenses in a savings account. Um, some people have been caught off guard, like I said, and had not didn't have this money uh, in their account. So I would say to these people to start maybe you, I know a stimulus check, the amount that you're getting is not gonna fund three to six months of your emergency savings, that might be what you're saying. But you definitely wanna get started. And I would say start by putting several hundred dollars in a bank account. Uh, simple, something simple as maybe even getting a 1%. That's getting you started. Because just like this emergency pandemic is on us, this is not probably gonna be our last emergency in our lifetime. So think about not being caught off guard in the future. The second thing I would probably recommend people to do, say you got your emergency fund funded, your job wasn't impacted, you have your income, maybe you're just working from home. And what you could do is maybe you could focus on a debt, target a debt that maybe a credit card that you have and that you always wanted to pay off and this might be an opportunity. You look at this money as a windfall and pay that debt off. Or if you can't pay the total debt off, I would encourage you to pay more than the minimum payment if that's what you've been doing. And then there are others that say, hey, I got my emergency fund set up. I, pay, I don't carry a lot of credit card debt. What am I gonna do with this check? Well, in keeping with savings, I would say start an IRA. If you don't have a, an IRA like a Roth or a traditional IRA, I would set up something that I could put aside money that would go for my retirement. Um, most times people can set aside as little as $50 a month uh, in a savings, but take this money and start a fund such as that. I have noticed that when people begin to take control and empower themselves with money, just on a, on a lower level like a stimulus check, it just propels them into doing the right thing going forward with their money. It's nothing like looking at your bank account and seeing something that you started, even as a small seed, grow into something viable that you could use down the road. The last area I would look at for you um, would be contributing to maybe a charity, um, your church, something that you feel real compelled to do or to help in an, in an area. For example, our local church is in a building fund. A lot of people are looking at this money that aren't impacted through their job or maybe, you know, have their income steady already. They're looking at maybe this is a windfall of money I could put toward my church's building fund. I could sow a seed. Or maybe there's other charities or auxiliaries in your church that you would love to see grow. And that's something that you could look at. Now, these were just a couple of ideas for a stimulus check. You probably already wrote down all the things you want to do with your money. And maybe one of the three was on my list that I just gave you. But however you look at it, you always want to be wise and be good stewards of what God has blessed us to have. Thanks, Sister Watts. Those are some great ideas on a way to 
you know, be fiscally responsible and intentional with our funds. Um, if you don't tell your money where to go, you will not, you know, you will know where your money went, basically. So mm -hmm. thanks again, Sister Watts. Yeah. And you don't have to wait to get a stimulus check to pay off debt, save for an emergency. Um, you don't have to wait for a stimulus check. Those are truly everyday ideas that you could do to learn to be fiscally responsible and truly a steward over what God has given you. What great information. Thank you so much, Elder Gilmore and Sister Watts. I think I even learned something. I took some notes. I'm very excited about what I heard. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about how marriage matters. Brother Sister Colbert. Thanks, Elder Bomonte. This is a very timely uh, section, uh, given the most of us are, are stuck in the house with our spouses. Stuck. <laughs> yeah, stuck. And our kids uh, for the majority of the day. You and your spouse may be learning how to share uh, a workspace um, and your children. You may have to be their uh, instructor. You have to maybe go on from an employee to a manager, to a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, to whatever roles you may have to, you know, pretty much take on, um, as well as being a loving spouse. Mm -hmm. Right. In this climate, things can be tense. They can be stressful. So what we're going to do next is we're going to hear from a couple of couples in our church. They're going to share some information that can be applied to marriages of all ages. Um, this is going to be information on growth and development. And first, we're going to hear from the Thompsons. They're going to share some information that was given to them from other married couples in their lives. Um, so the first piece of advice that we both received, I think that really sticks out to us the most mm -hmm. is from my grandfather during our marriage counseling, um, Pastor Oliver. He drew a diagram with a circle and God written in the center. And he put my name on one end and Justin's name on the other end. And he drew a line from our names to God. And he said, the closer you get to God, the closer you get to each other. And I think for me, that just spoke volumes because it really just showed me visually that the closer I get to God, the closer I get to my husband. And I've experienced that in my marriage. The closer I've grown and gotten to God spiritually, the closer me and Justin get to each other. And another important piece of advice that we've gotten from multiple people is the importance of communication. Um, the importance of communication is very big because you want to be on the same page as your spouse on all levels. And no matter if it's good, bad, high, or low, you'll never grow with your spouse or learn your spouse if you don't learn to communicate. And I think the last piece was also uh, from my grandfather, Deacon Murray. <laughs> um, he told us this the day we got engaged. He said um, he didn't really necessarily like when people say marriage is 50 50 because in his eyes marriage is 100 100 you have to be willing to give 100 percent to your spouse and so i think that's very important yeah and with that it's important to think about it 100 100 because if the husband is always giving 100 percent and the wife is always giving 100 percent, you guys will both be also receiving 100 percent you won't have to look for um, anything in your wife or you won't have to look for anything in your husband if you guys are always both given 100%. This is most definitely easier said than done, but when done, it is most definitely efficient. Thank you, Justin and Brittany. I love the visual of the circle with God in the middle mm -hmm. uh, with the two spouses you know, coming from the outside, but meeting in the middle, which is putting God and Jesus in the center. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a really good visual. Um, recently, I was given some advice um, to keep work and home separate, especially during this time we're working at home most days. So what I'm going to do, my action item for the week is I am going to shut down work at a set time and I am going to end my day and not bring work to the bedroom. So no more laptops in the bed, huh? No. <laughs> Next, we're going to hear from a couple who's had a great influence in our life and many others through the Progressive Marriage Ministry. Yes, we've spent many nights at their home learning how to apply biblical principles to our marriage. Next up, we have Elder and Missionary White. Good afternoon, Missionary and Elder White. Good afternoon. Can you tell our viewers how long the two of you have been married? 
We've been married 47 years, going on 48. Amen. That's a testimony by itself. 47, (laughs) almost 48 years. Yikes, that's wild. So our first question is, what advice would you give to couples in this time? Couple that just may be dealing with life and the added issues of this pandemic. Well, I would first say that they need to go back <clears throat> to the basics of their relationship. And first, there must be love for God. Amen. Each other. Mm-hmm. And there must be mutual respect. And, and I also feel that it would be very helpful to um, remember their marriage vows. Amen. Because uh, we said for better or for worse, richer or poor, sickness or health, then do we part. Right. So I think we revisit that and realize we are in difficult times, but these vows we made and God will help us. And to also remember that you're on the same team. Amen. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And work through anything, but we have to work through it together. Amen. Stronger together. I like that. Amen. Okay. The next question is, are there any specific scriptures that have been helpful in you guys' marriage? Uh, yes, there's been quite a few, but we're just going to narrow it down to a few. Um, I'm going to start off with just one section, segment of scripture coming from um, Ephesians 5. Verses 21, 22, and verse 25. And if we submit yourselves one to another Amen. in the field, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the Amen. church and gave himself for it. That is really saying that as both the husband and wife have duties and responsibilities to respect, love, and honor, and cherish each other, and support each other through thick and through thin. And there are going to be disagreements, but in the disagreements, remember how God sees you. He wants you to be loving and supportive of, a, of each other and be an example yeah. to those who are watching you. And I have a few that has really ministered to me down through our married life. One is Matthew 6 and 33. says, but, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added, added unto you. you. Yes, ma'am. That's a blessing. When we put him first, everything else will work out. Another one was Psalm 37 and 25. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seek baby bread. Just the comfort to know that God will take care of us mm-hmm. and he will provide us. And my, one of my, my uh, third one, I have many, but the third one I'm going to use is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart yep. and lay not, not on thy own understanding. understanding. Amen. In all thy ways with not as him, him, and he will shall direct, direct thy path. path. Yes, so ma'am. And using those, and uh, that has been one of the successful things in my marriage is God's word, and we can trust him. Amen. Thank you for that. I know that scripture that Elder White read, we talked about that many, many nights and uh, just really breaking that apart and and learning how to apply it to our marriage. Uh, Missionary White, those last two scriptures that you read, I think can be applied to so many different areas of our life, especially in this time. Um, My next question is, what would you say to a couple that may be struggling in this time? Maybe they had issues before the shelter in place that may have been exacerbated right now. What would you say to a couple dealing with some issues right now? Well, we need to, in our communication, go back to the real factor that we need to love and respect and honor each other. Mm. So when we communicate, we're going to first of all have prayer. Amen. To call to calm our attitudes and anything that needs to be calmed prayer will help get us in the right vein so that we can talk mm-hmm. and talk honestly without venom and, and anger because generally what happens to us is we get caught up in our feelings and, and our emotions rather than going into it from a place of peace and understanding trying to get on the same page And we must communicate from a place of peace and understanding. And that's the challenge. 
And with most of us, we have a tendency to want to get our point across mm-hmm. at any cost. Mm-hmm. We yell with us, with whatever comes to mind, to get our point across. Because we feel that we have a right to say what we need to say, but there's a right way to do it. And if we're not careful, we can get ourselves into unnecessary trouble. Right. And also, the word communication, people say that a lot, but it, that entails a lot, not just talking. Not just right. talking, but it, uh, the definition for communication is one of the definitions is a successful mm-hmm. conveying a, a, or sharing of mm-hmm. one's thoughts, ideas, or feelings. Right. And successful is, is the key because uh, in, in not just <laughs> uh, hearing, but to listen. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, they, uh, when someone is talking, and especially if you're, and you don't want to, um, we don't want to attack one another. You want to say, this is how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And that way, the least person, they're not on defense. And then they may be able to hear you better. Because if you just attack them, you do, you do that, then they, they're they not even right. thinking about what you're saying. They're trying to get their uh, arsenal ready to get back at you. So uh-huh. they feel like they're, you know. Right. So, so communicate is to, to hear and to listen and to feel the person. And uh, if you do that, and, and also making changes where changes is needed. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, oh, you're right, you know, I own that. You're right, okay, I was wrong. Well, that's good, but if you get up and keep doing it the same way, it creates an issue. Right. So I think it's very important if there's changes need to be made, make them ASAP as soon as possible. And that helps alleviate stress. Mm-hmm. And then share your feelings. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, frustrated things, you know, you're worried. Share with your mate what's going on inside of you. Mm-hmm. And that way you can pray for each other. Oh, and like I said, the main thing, the main thing, if we're talking about finance, let's talk about finance. If we're going to cut back, let us both cut back. You mm-hmm. know, don't mm-hmm. be one-sided. So, and then we have different seasons in our lives, especially through now. You know, we have to recognize where our partner is right now. And they may have changed what they needed yesterday. They may, may need something different today. Mm-hmm. And if they're sharing you know, what they need, and it will give you a means to do it, then to feel that. Mm-hmm. So communicate, uh, not just hearing, but listening, hearing, and acting. Okay. Yeah. So to, to kind of recap some of the things that I, I think I, that was most um, uh, important to me just to, to take out of just what, what you guys have said is uh, one is getting back to praying together, uh, praying to God, m- most importantly, um, going back to the basics of why we fell in love, um, as well as uh, looking at what we why we why we said our vows, what we said in our vows and renewing those, so to speak, during this time. Um, and so uh, and ultimately communicating. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else you got from there? I think the communication piece was really important. Just rem- reminding myself that I have a responsibility to communicate to my spouse how I'm feeling. Not only is he not a mind reader, but it, when I tell him what my fears, my anxieties are, it'll help you understand how to pray for me. Right. Well, we want to thank you guys, uh, Missionary uh, White and Elder uh, Elder White. We want to thank you guys for joining us for tonight's session. Um, and uh, is there any last words you guys would like to share with the, the viewers tonight? Yes, there's one thing that I would like to express, to express, and that is in the midst of your communication, if one of you finds themselves at odds to the degree that you begin to lose your direction and become more angry, Stop yourself and say, babe, can we stop for about 10 minutes? I need to pray yes. and ask God to help me because my anger is rising. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So get up so that we can carry on and end our communication on a positive note. Amen. Yeah. That's paramount. Yep. Thank you. Well, we thank you All both. Right. We love you. We thank you for pouring into us and we thank you for sharing with our viewers today. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless y'all. For our viewers, regarding marriage matters, there's a scripture I would love for you guys to read. It's Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. But what's stood out to me is the last portion of the 18th verse, where it reads, praying one for each other long and hard. Um, And 
ultimately keeping each other's spirits up. That was what stood out the most to me. And in this time um, where we're dealing with, you know, adversity, external, you don't really want to have external adversity. So praying one for each other is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. After reading that scripture, of course, I have an action item that I've set for myself. So I'm going to surprise you. Yes, I'm going to surprise you. Um, but it's going to be pretty much to uplift your spirit. Wow, that information about marriage was very enlightening. Thank you so much, brother and sister Colbert and brother and sister Thompson. Now we're going to talk about home life and the importance of home life, especially in this season. Tell us a little bit, brother and sister Colbert. The last segment today is going to be our Home Life Matters section. So next we're going to hear from our lovely church mother, Mother Silva. Everyone knows Mother Silva here. We love her and she always has great words to sow into all of us, especially the ladies here. Um, we're going to hear about what it means to really put God first during this time, what it means to have structure and really the importance of having structure in your home um, and how we can still enjoy our family time during this time. So... Up next is Mother Silva. Thanks for joining us, Mother Silva. How would you suggest that people continue to make the best use of their time and put God first when the day seems to run together? Well, first of all, I suggest that people recognize the fact that at all times, that our life should be in order because mm -hmm. order helps us keep sane and helps us feel like we're accomplishing something. So I think the best use of the time is to, first of all, do the things that are necessary through the day to keep the children in order, to keep the house in order, to make sure that all the daily things are being done so that we won't feel like when the day has ended we haven't accomplished anything. And what I mean by that is right. that uh, typically we'd be going out the house to go to work. Mm -hmm. right. So since we're staying in the house and not going out to work, there still should be a time for everything and a place for everything and so forth and so on. So I think t basically that we should realize that just because we're staying in the house that we don't change into different people. We don't spend all of our time watching uh, television. We don't spend all of our time uh, getting involved and get, letting our minds wander and, and getting involved in worry and mm -hmm. watching the news and things like that. But focus on things that will, so that when we do have an opportunity to come out of our home, we won't, um, will be better and not worse. Right. For the, for the wear. Right. You know? mm -hmm. Right. So. so I hear you talk a little bit about structure. Um, why do you think it's important to have structure during this time? Well, first of all, God is a God of order. Amen. So Amen. He, Amen. he expects us to be orderly. I, I was think, when I was thinking about this question, and I, I may not have actually answered question one the way that I wanted to, but I'll, I'll just try to tie it in and encapsulate it in some of the other, as I'm answering some of the other questions, but uh, I was thinking about um, the thing, the, the, the point that God is a God of order. Mm -hmm. And so in order for us to have him be the God of order, we have to realize that the day was made by him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we should be thinking about the fact that he made the day, mm -hmm. and not only did he make the day, except he build the house. In other words, the scripture says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Amen. So if we don't start our day off ordering our day in the way he would have us order our day, we're likely to make mistakes. We're likely to be frustrated. We're likely mm. to be argumentative. We're likely to let everything that we see our family members do get on our nerves. Uh, we're likely to um, not uh, feel like we're ever going to get out of this or we're, we're likely to focus on the things about the bills, about the the car, you know, all the things that we could be focusing on rather than thinking on the things that are lovely, pure, just, and honest, and true, and of good report, and so forth. Amen. So That's good. We need to have 
structure so that we realize that structure helps us feel safe as well. One of the things I teach as an administration class and one of the things we say is that when we don't have structure, then everybody around us, they do things that are out of order in mm-hmm. order to call us to tell them what's in order. So if you're bossing, if you're the boss of the job, if you do things haphazardly, then your co- your employees, they work disorderly because right. they're right. waiting mm-hmm. for you to pull them in order. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So same thing at your house. If you're disorderly, if you don't have order in the house or structure in the house, then the children do any and everything until you have to pull you have to pull pull in the reins and say, Oh, wait a minute, this is not what goes on here. Right. This Amen. is not what's happening here. So this is the way and God is like that. He is a God of order. And if we get too far out out of order, then he is going to pull us back into order. Mm-hmm. Amen. The scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and yes. his righteousness. Mm-hmm. And Amen. so uh, we need to be seeking him first. That's the first order of the day. Right. And it also says men ought to always pray and not mm-hmm. faint. So right. if we're not praying, we're more likely to faint. That's right. Mm-hmm. right. Amen. So um, everything should have a place and everything should be in its rightful place. And I'm not saying that I have a, a very, very, everything around me is neat and orderly. But what I'm saying is I do know where I, I might have a structured, non, uh, a non-structure which means that I, I know where everything is, even mm-hmm. though you might not know. If you came to my house, you wouldn't know where everything is, but I know where it is right. because I have an order to things. You're, you're intentional, so there's less chaos. Right. right. That makes right. sense. Okay. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So. Mother Silva, uh, please share with our listeners and viewers um, uh, ways that they could enjoy the family with this social distancing that's in place. I am so glad you asked that question because it reminded me of some things. Uh, this past summer, I did um, gave my granddaughter a birthday party, and she has not had a party Aww. in years and years and years and years. And I actually found out a lot about her because I made up this game with 20 questions. I won't read the 20 questions, but I'm going to tell you just a, a, a few things. Uh, and I found out some things about her that I would not have known had I not. And I'm going to give you two of the questions right now. I'm going to write it down. One is, if I could be president, who would be my secretary of state? Mm. Now, I knew what she was going to say on that question because I know she loved her brother so much. But but just having a time where you ask your children questions about themselves and and things that maybe uh, they wouldn't expect you to ask them, but you are trying to find out what what they're thinking and it off, it often brings a lot of discussion and joy and so forth and also um, what would you do to eradicate prejudice because Ooh. we think that we're the only ones that deal with prejudice as adults but our children deal with prejudice Absolutely. and they deal with people um, treating them different because of the way they look or the mm-hmm. way they talk or the way they dress or whatever the case might be it doesn't matter you don't have to be a black person or a Native American person or a Hispanic person or somebody to have prejudice against you. Mm -hmm. So just seeing what they think about that, and it also gives you an opportunity to hear things that have happened to them that maybe you didn't even know because you never asked that question. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about um, doing things around the house, like you might need to do some painting to kind of freshen up the house a little bit. So having it be a family project, everybody painting, Mm -hmm. Uh, everybody uh, reading a book together, you know, just picking a book. And you might pick the book or they might pick the book, but then everybody taking turns reading and you don't read the oh, whole man. book today because we have a lot of days that we're going to be around the house. <laughs> and you, But you might just have a time where we're just going to have family reading. Right. And it doesn't have to necessarily be the Bible, but it could be a book in the Bible if you so choose. Yeah, absolutely. But it could mm-hmm. be a book that you think that would teach them some good value. Right. Okay. So those are some... And then looking through old family albums. Oh, that's something that will oh, be really Oh, that's really fine. Good. Yeah. Those yeah. are some really great ideas. So thank you for sharing those. Um, the youth department, we did a virtual scavenger hunt. I believe it was about a week ago and kids got to run through the house and find things like uh, Bibles and first aid kits and just have fun. Um, right, right, right. Some families, that was like fun. It, it was. I have it on my list to treasure hunt. <laughs> some families, uh, they do Zoom calls. We did a Zoom call yes. yesterday. Um, I know the yeah. James family, they did a Zoom call on Easter. I thought that was really cute. Um, we've done family dinner night. 
I don't know how much the kids enjoyed it, but I enjoyed having some help in the kitchen. And then uh, we often do game nights. Sometimes we meet up with other families and we do um, game nights, so different things to have fun. Sounds really good. Yeah. I thought about one more thing, keeping a journal of how you're really feeling now, a family journal. Yeah. You know. You don't have to write on it every day, but just when you think about it, the journal is laying there open someplace in the house. When I was in graduate school, that was one of the things we had in the classroom was a journal that laid in the classroom and somebody could go, everybody had their own journal laying around the room somewhere and students could go and write something on that person's journal. Got it. You That's know, excellent. That they were thinking about about them mm-hmm. or some thoughts that they were having that related to something they had said in class or something. So it could be a journal that everybody writes in or it could be a journal per family member mm-hmm. where you can go and write something to the, to the people in the family. That's an excellent idea because we're truly living in unprecedented times. Right, right. Is there anything else that you might like to add or share with our viewers? Well, I had, I had thought that I should probably say that... Um, one of the key things during this time, because I, I also dealt with um, the issue of how children felt back when the towers fell in New York, mm-hmm. when the Twin Towers uh, mm-hmm. fell, mm-hmm. and I realized that um, this may not seem like it to other people, but this is a traumatic situation for children. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But one of the most important things during this period is that everybody in the family feels safe and especially the children feel mm-hmm. safe, and that they, and even if you don't know what you can be, what you can do besides feed them, clothe them, shelter them, and love them, even if you don't know of other things you can do besides that, the words need to be constantly spoken. I'm going to keep you safe. Gotcha. Uh, we are mm-hmm. safe here in our home, mm-hmm. and I would never let anything happen to you if I could, if I could do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. And not only that. Uh, that everybody in the family individually and collectively feel like they're loved, that they're special, and we need to be very careful with the words that we're speaking, not only during this time, but at all times in the Amen. family. Uh, do not say things that you can't take back, because even though, you know, uh, you say something, and you might not even really mean it, but you're just angry at that moment. Right. Right. Sometimes that resonates in, in somebody's mm-hmm. spirit for a lifetime. Those words stick. So be careful of what you're saying and be careful that we're speaking words of love, words of confirmation, uh, words that make people feel safe and cared about and um, validate their space in the family and then give Amen. people quiet time. Mm-hmm. You know, there needs to be a space in everybody's home where a child or an adult can retreat and it is Amen. okay for them to be there by themselves, be quiet, and no one else can enter that space while they're in there being quiet. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important because oftentimes we forget that kids can suffer from anxiety also. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, mm-hmm. thank you so much, Mother Silva. We appreciate your time, and we love you. We appreciate you, and we just thank you. Thanks again, Mother Silva. Love you all, too, and I appreciate you and looking forward to having more time to share with you. All right. Thank you. you. Have a blessed night. That was amazing what Mother Silva said in regards to being able to be innovative in, in, in these times. Um, I know we, we talked uh, briefly about how our daughter um, is not going to go through her eighth grade graduation and how our son is not going to be able to go to uh, his junior prom. But ultimately, they don't have to uh, go to a physical location to do these things. Um, we've been able to put together various different uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. And so we can use each other as support groups and um, celebrate these graduations, celebrate these things uh, at a later date or even at a, a, a situation where you can, you know, have your family members from all across and that way everybody can attend, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, if they're logged in into a, a various different uh, video conferencing uh, meeting, you can still celebrate. We can actually borrow one of these great mics here at the church to, to, to pre- pretty much announce them and say, yeah, we want us welcome to the stage, Brianna Colbert, you know, for graduating. You know, we can do some of the, these type of things. Yeah. I think it's important to know that all of 2020 hasn't been canceled. We can still celebrate and we find ways to schedule things further out and celebrate. We know that we have provided a lot of information tonight and you might have questions. So if you have questions, all you have to do 
is email the email on the screen, media at progressivecojic.com, and we'll be sure that the question gets to the appropriate presenter this afternoon. We want to thank all our viewers for tuning in for tonight's session on Family Matters with the Progressive Church of God in Christ. We thank Pastor Tolliver and his leadership, and we thank the Progressive Youth Department under the direction of Elder Bomate. We thank you all for viewing. Praise God. Praise God. We hope that you enjoy today's programming. We thank God for Brother and Sister Colbert, for Brother and Sister Thompson, for Mother Silva, for Elder Gilmore, and for Sister Debbie Watts. Thank you so much for contributing, and we hope that you learn something that will bless you and your family. On behalf of our pastor, Superintendent Benny L. Tolliver, and the entire Progressive Church of God in Christ family, we want you to know that we are praying for you. You. Before we close this episode, we do want to end with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for what our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen. We thank you, Father, that you created the family, Father. We thank you, God, for mom and dad and for children and grandma and grandpa. We thank you, God, that even in this season, you are strengthening families, Father. Thank you, God, for guiding us in our finances. Thank you, God, for helping us to make wise choices on the behalf of our family, God. We ask, God, that the information that we have received tonight would not fall on bad ground, Father, but that it would fall in a place where it can grow and that we can use it, Father, not just to build our families, but to build the kingdom. We pray, God, for your strength. We pray for your peace. We pray for your joy in this season. And we thank you, God, for the reminder that family matters. We ask that you will bless those who have viewed today. And God, bring them peace and joy as well. And God, until we meet again, bring us peace. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Believe that you have enjoyed our worship. Looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday. God bless you.